Before we officially begin, I'll give you a couple reminders that you'll hear a lot this weekend, but um, as a courtesy to those in the room, we'd ask uh, everyone to silence your cell phones. Um, when you're uh, ready to ask a question, if you could raise your hand, we'll get a microphone holder uh, to you. And if you would uh, please give your full name and media affiliation each time you ask a question, that would be great. Um, if you're joining on Zoom, we would ask you to use the raise hand function for questions, and we'll address questions in the room first and then get to the virtual world as time allows. And one last reminder, recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras is prohibited, so we ask that you uh, refrain from that, and we'll give you the information where to find these um, in the NCA Media Hub uh, when we're finished. So we're uh, excited to get started, very pleased to welcome UAB student athletes Yaxa Lindeborg and Eric Gaines to the stage. Yaxa was the AA tournament MOP. Eric is the team's second leading scorer. And we'll go ahead and open it up to questions for uh, Yaxa and Eric. Yeah, so let's start with you. Well, Coach AK is a um, very tough coach. You know, he tells you what you want to hear. Uh, coach AK is a very tough coach. You know, he tells you what you want to hear, and he speaks from experience, you know, because he's a player's coach. So uh, he relates to us, and, you know, sometimes in game, he sees things you don't see. So it's a uh, very helpful and real, like, role model, dad type figure kind of guy, and uh, I'm you know, real appreciative of him. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback off what Yak said. You know, he's a, he's a hard coach, you know, he's outgoing. He's gonna tell you what you wanna know and uh, love him to death. He, he put me in a position to make me be great and I love him for that. Julian Mitchell, WVTM 13 in Birmingham. Uh, for both of you guys, at one point in this season, you all were four and five, had lost three straight. I'm interested in, obviously, you've rattled off all these wins to get to this point. What was that conversation in the locker room at that point in the season, kind of what has led to now this turn here being in Spokane? Um, around that time, we were still, around that time, we were still getting to know each other. Uh, we were all new. And in the locker room, you know, we were just telling the, each other, just like, let's stay together. Uh, we're not going to be in the hole of this ditch forever, you know what I'm saying? It's going to come to light, and we got we got we got it rolling. We got we got to knowing each other, and started winning. Got that little streak, and been going up since. It's like I can't explain. I mean, we were we were a new group, you know, and it was just it was just hard, you know, coming back and seeing the progress from the beginning of the uh, time I came. And then as we started playing, started rolling, no doubt in the team, started winning. I would say we had multiple talks in the locker room, some with no change. Um, eventually, you know, once you get that first three game win streak, now you start feeling really good about yourself. And uh, we start trusting our teammates more than we did before and uh, started clicking more. Our defense really lacked all year, but Eventually, we started helping each other out more on defense, which helped to more chemistry and just believing in our, ourselves. And that's what led to the wins. D. Jackson, CBS 42 in Birmingham. For both of you guys, and you actually just touched on something about chemistry. On any given night, it can be any player that scores. It can be Eric can be the leading scorer. AJ can be the leading scorer. You actually have been the leading scorer. What is it about the chemistry and what is it about this team that makes it so special, especially getting ready for the postseason here? I would say, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, threats, like on offense, like you named, you know, AJ, he really uh, carried us to our uh, championship win last game. And, um, you know, Daniel, he's been struggling all season, but, you know, he stepped up big in the playoffs. I feel like 
just try not to lose the motivation that you have and always find your reason why you're playing. You know, uh, Coach AK believes in all his guys the same way, even no matter how he shows it. So I would just say keep the trust that we've had and Eric, you know, doing his best job to find those guys in the right spots and, uh, you know, just making the best of their time. Same thing you said, you know, just as a point guard fighting my teammates, you know, giving them confidence, seeing them make a shot, you know what I'm saying, ready to go in. That's it. Uh, I wish we were closer, <laughs> but um, it's a, it's a great experience, you know, for the whole Alabama state. Um, seeing the teams that, you know, made it to the tournament, then maybe playing one of those teams, you know, so it's a great experience. Yeah, I would say it's awesome too. You know, I'm a big Twitter guy, and I always see those uh, Alabama fans coming together, you know, to cheer one on. And I just hope that you know those fans that are here early for other teams can maybe cheer us on as well, and we can do the same for them. Player, that's helpful. More questions. Uh, I'll, I'll direct this specifically to, to you, Axel. There, I know you've talked throughout this season about what it's meant for you to to be a part of this team and to be here, uh, to have UAB and this group, especially on this stage. Just how special is this moment, and, and how are you all feeling heading into a, a very massive moment for this school and you guys as a group? Yeah, this moment is uh, really big. You know, this is a, a dream come true of mine. You know, uh, before I signed to UAB, I, I told the fans, you know, that hopefully we can get a ring and I'll try my best to get it for them. And, uh, you know, I succeeded in that aspect, I would say. Um, but playing here is really amazing. You know, I never thought I would get as close to coaching staff as I would. You know, Cross really stepped up, you know, his recruitment with me and uh, we got really close together. But everybody else on the staff did a great job making me feel welcome and uh, keeping me sane, I guess. We have a question on Zoom. Let's go to Evan Dudley of Alabama.com. Uh, for Yaxel uh, uh, and Eric, both obviously, uh, you know, y'all pride yourselves on uh, defense a lot, even though it hasn't been the best defensive year, but you've really kicked it up here in the last couple of weeks. What's kind of the, I guess, the secret or the juice to being able to run the defenses that Andy asked you to, you know, switching a whole lot, going from the one three one to man to man, uh, just kind of what goes into, you know, being able to have that ability to switch so much. Eric first. Um, just being physical, you know, uh, we switch up defense a lot, you know, to, to confuse the opponent. And I feel like when we do that, when we be aggressive in it, it's effective. So I think that's the key, just being aggressive and being physical, more uh, tougher than the other team. Another big part would be uh, communication. You know, uh, nothing really works unless you're talking to your other guys and uh, helping them see their blind spots and uh, figuring out where to go next. Um, it's important because I, I don't think they can make it all the way over here. And for us to be this uh, many hours away and they're watching on TV, I feel like we got to go harder because we don't have that you know, fan support here besides our cheerleaders and probably our band. So just got to go hard for them. Yeah, I, I watched the game last year uh, against FAU, and they lost a couple guys, but they still have the same group. Um, they're physical. Uh, they remind us of a North Texas type defense, and um, we just got to be we just got to be tough. I feel like that's that's the key to victory: just being tough and be able to score on offense. We're not really worried about defense. Our defense is going to show, but offense, I feel like we're going to struggle a little bit. So we just got to be tough and just finish plays. You know, execute the plays. That's it. Yeah, Axel? Yeah, I watched uh, their tournament run last year. I liked how they were really well to, uh, connected uh, group. You know, they played off each other really well. And uh, you can see that they had belief and trust in each other. Um, I would say our biggest point here, like you said, would be 
to score offensively because they have a great defensive group and uh, you know just contain the D, the day, if I say his name right, um, and just make the most of what we can do. We have time for one or two more questions if there are any. They're tough, you know, they're connected. Uh, they, they do the most fundamental on D, you know. They X out a lot, they switch. We just gotta be physical. We have to, like I said, we have to execute our plays that, you know, AK calls that he sees is best gonna work and we just gotta execute and be tough, finish plays at the rim. And when our shooters are open, we just gotta be hands and feet ready, knock down shots. Yesel? Uh, one thing they do is they close the gaps off really well, you know. Don't really give you a driving angle. So I would say we got to be really tough with the ball and avoid countering as much as we can, like AK is telling us. And uh, that will be the biggest part of our success. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the time for UAB student athletes. And we'll have Coach Kennedy shortly. We welcome UAB coach Andy Kennedy, and we'll ask for coach to give a quick overview, and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach? Uh, thank you. Yeah, excited to be here. It's my first trip to Spokane, and I uh, hope we get to stay a few days. Actually, I, I'm, I'm friends with Mark Few. We go back decades. Uh, Dan Munson, uh, really the guy that, that helped get this thing started, was actually a grad assistant at UAB. Uh, when I was a player there. So that's how far back uh, I go with, with, with the guys that are the pioneers behind this dynasty. So excited to be here, uh, excited for my team who have certainly earned their way. I don't like that term, bid stealing. We didn't steal anything. We, we earned our way here through the, the play of our guys. So really excited for them and for the opportunity that this tournament presents. Um, you've seen coaching from both sides of it, mid-major, high-major, the tournament expansion talk. Where do you stand on how many teams should be and what the access should be? What's, what's your take on it? I'm definitely for expansion. Um, I've got some crazy ideas, uh, Brian. I, I think we should do away with conference tournaments. I think we should award the automatic to the regular season champ because I know a lot of it is timing. Timing is the essence of life, right? So a lot of people say, we don't want to expand the tournament because we have to finish at the appropriate time before those flowers start blooming at Augusta National. So we, they say we're going to run out of time. Well, we're not going to run out of time if we move it back a week. If, we move, if you added a week to the NCAA tournament and you based it off of, I'm an analytics guy, shout out to Ken Palm. I, I, if you based it off Ken Palm rankings of your conference, for instance, I think we were the ninth rated conference maybe via Ken Palm this year, meaning the American Athletic. And with that, if you finished in the top 10, you were going to get, okay, if you finish in the top four in the regular season, then you're going to get a bid to the NCAA tournament. If you're the number one conference, uh, the Big 12, I don't even know how many teams they have in there now, but okay, you're the number one league, you're going to get 10 teams in the NCAA tournament, uh, so forth and so on. Um, Everybody says, oh, I don't want to do that. It's going to water it down. I bet you'll watch, and I bet you'll pay to watch, and I bet TV will pay to watch, and I bet uh, it'll, it'll solve a lot of our problems. But I don't know what that number is, um, but uh, I'm definitely for expansion. Coach D. Jackson, CBS 42 in Birmingham. 
Two questions. Number one, how easy is it to get over the jet lag for this long trip when you're coming to play in, in March Madness? And number two, I asked the guys earlier, on any given night, you have any player that can step up for you. How good is it to have this type of depth going into the tournament? Yeah, we've actually, in our last five games, we've had five different leading scores. We've been on both sides of this. Uh, the last two years, uh, we had a kid named Jelly Walker. Uh, two years ago, uh, he stole the attention of a lot of people in, the, in this field in the college basketball by the incredible run that he had in, in the Conference USA tournament, leading us to a tournament championship, allowing us to, to get back to the NCAA tournament. And everybody, myself included, knew that when a big shot was, was going to be taken, it was going to be taken by him. Whether I wanted it to be or not, uh, he was going to take that shot. This year, it's, it comes from different guys. Uh, we're a team that's, that, quite frankly, is pretty mediocre in a lot of areas, but we're really good at attacking that paint, getting to the free throw line, uh, eating off our offensive glass, and trying to put pressure on your defense by constantly attacking uh, the two guys that were here prior. Uh, Eric Gaines and Yaxel Lindenborg are both guys that will run a lot of offense through. Alejandro Vasquez in our, in our championship quest in beating Temple uh, last Sunday scored 29 points, the most ever in a conference tournament game in UAB history, and that's a very storied history. Uh, so we got a number of different guys that can rise up at any one time. I would certainly like uh, all of them to show up tomorrow. Let's go to Zoom and a question for Evan Dudley of Al.com. Evan? Uh, two questions for you, Andy. Uh, number one, uh, this is a team that's uh, struggled a little bit with 1-3-1 uh, at times this season. Just, uh, you know, what's going to be kind of, I guess, the secret to kind of uh, implementing that at times as much as you change defenses? And number two, what goes into guarding a guy like Jaden Ledee, a guy who's been named an uh, All-American? Well, for the second part first, Jaden Ledee is, is tremendous. You know, we're going to do our best to try to make him work for his touches, shrink the floor as much as possible, and try to match his physicality. Uh, which are, again, easy to say, but hard to do. He's a tremendous player, and I think San Diego State does a great job of making sure that he touches it most each and every possession down the floor. Puts a lot of pressure on you at the basket. He's good at what we're good at, quite frankly. He's really good off his offensive glass. He's good in the painted area, and he gets a lot of fouls drawn. So we're going to be really strategic in, in our matchups and understanding where the help needs to come from, number one. Number two, we're going to do what we do. I, I know there's a number of teams in the Mountain West. I'm a, I'm a basketball Jones, and uh, where we are in the central time zone, we always get that late TV slot where it's the Mountain West versus uh, conference play. And I, and I watch it. I like to watch it. I know a lot of guys in the league. I've known Dutch for over three decades. I, I, I've got a lot of relationships in the league. So I, I like to watch them. Uh, and I've seen San Diego State a handful of times. They played for the national championship last year, so it doesn't get much better than that. The job that they've been able to do there is, is really remarkable. So it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us, but we're just going to do what we do. We've said since June when we got this group together, uh, again, we lost 85% of our production off last year's group that won 29 games. Uh, we had to figure out what this group's identity was, and ultimately we just want them to be best version of self, and that won't change tomorrow despite the bright lights. We'll mix and match and try to see what works. Uh, Julian Mitchell, WVT and 13 in Birmingham. Coach, a question for you there. As you said uh, about a question ago, an answer ago, you said um, mediocre in a lot of areas. I'm interested, this was a point a team that was four and five at one point in the season, had lost three straight, um, and you've made it to this point. What is it about this group that's gotten you all here to this point, and what is it you think that will keep you here for this weekend? Well, um, yeah, thank you for making that point. I was trying to block that out. You just cost me some <laughs> therapy hours. Uh, yeah, we were four and five. We had lost, uh, as you said, we lost three straight, two um, by double figures. We had no identity. Uh, we had a lot of questions, very few answers. Uh, but to this guy's, cr this group's credit, I, uh, I'm really proud of this group. You know, I guess any coach that's sitting up here in the NCAA tournament is going to talk about how proud they are of their group. But I, I'm really, um, I feel gratified. I feel, I feel like this group has accomplished so much. You know, ultimately as the coach, you want your team to reach its potential. You don't know what that is. And, and I never have gotten into, you know, we have to reach a certain number in order to be successful. Ultimately, you want to always try to compete for your conference championship, which, which we did during the regular season. 
uh, and we were able to, to walk up that ladder uh, with a pair of scissors in your hand. You know, as, as, as a child, you're told not to do that. You know, we've all been told that, but boy, as an adult, it is sure is fun. Um, and so to capture that and to get this program back to the NCAA tournament for a second time in three years, um, I, feel, I feel like this team is, is, is close to being everything that it's capable of being. And that's the ultimate goal for a coach. Uh, this group never, uh, to its credit, man, continued to work. We, we talked about stack and work, man, stack work, stack work. And then in March, when you stand on that stack, you're going to like your view if you continue to stack it. So this group continued to stack it. We started having some tangible results. I think the game was, we came back and beat a couple of people. And then we, right before Christmas, we had the old Drake Bulldogs coming to town. There, they were a little like us. You know, we had, uh, we'd won some games. They'd won some games in the previous three years. We're actually, uh, we're two of the top 10 winningest teams, Drake and us, uh, over the last four years. We're both, I think we're like eighth and they're like fourth or fifth in most wins. So it's difficult for us to get games. <laughs> so we, we had a conversation and we did a home and home with Drake and, and they come to the Bartow, uh, the get out game right before Christmas and we beat them in overtime. And I think when we came back from that and we had another couple, we had UNC Asheville who was uh, uh, right at the top of their league and then we started league play and we started stacking some wins and with that came some tangible results that hey, uh, we're starting to figure out our formula. And then you have to be disciplined enough to stay to that formula because we don't play a real sexy formula. It's not a lot of fun, you know, to, to grind out wins. But our guys got committed to that. And then we started uh, having a real trust. This group trusts each other. I want them to trust me, but I would much rather them trust each other. And, and I think they really trust each other. And as a result, um, you know, we, we made a little run. We've won five straight. And uh, I hope we can extend that tomorrow. Yeah, bananas, isn't it? Um, I, 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 think, uh, I think we should invest in a map, maybe, and put it in that room in Indianapolis. You know those big wall maps? You can get them pretty cheap. And, and if you just look up there when you, before we and, and take, a, take a glance, hey, it's bananas. But for us, I, I don't care. I, we're just excited to be playing. Think about this. So we played the late slot um, uh, on for the AAC Conference Tournament Championship. I think it was a 215 tip. So um, by the time uh, I got all the confetti out of my hair and, um, and we were able to get that trophy and we were able to get up that ladder with the scissors that I referred to earlier and then there's some media obligations that come on. And so then they, we still hadn't left the arena and so then they, they whisked me up to this room and I had literally walked in the room. I hadn't been in the room 30 seconds until I saw her name pop up. And as soon as it popped up, I immediately got my group out of there and we got back and we tried to uh, get home. So I had no idea Alabama and Auburn were in, our, in, in the same region until we got back and the dust had settled. Uh, and then to have the opportunity, uh, even in being in the same bracket is, is one of those. So uh, it's just kind of crazy the way things work. Uh, and I, I, I can speak for myself. I don't, really, I don't really care about a lot of things. I'm just glad that we're in the tournament. You said big game. Can you be specific? Man, I'm having a hard time remembering. Do you remember who the leading scorer in that game was? <laughs> yeah, excuse me? Give him, give him that mic back. I didn't hear him. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. You know, um, I think Jim Brandenburg, I don't want to butcher the name. I think that's, am I saying that right? I think he was the head coach here, and Coach Bartow had a home in Palm Desert. Uh, and, and so he was, he was close with... Uh, with, uh, with Brandenburg, we came out here, we came to San Diego. What's the nice hotel, the Del Coronado or something like that? Uh, we came out and played in their tournament back in the days when you did those things, you know, the, just the little tournaments and came out and played in San Diego State's tournament and then they returned the game the next year. Uh, I think it's the only time UAB has ever played San Diego State. 
Uh, so anyway, I don't remember much about the game other than I was the leading scorer. Um, I remember those things. <laughs> I, I didn't talk to Fuey about San Diego State. I talked to him about, hey, man, I need a place to practice. <laughs> you know, he said, get in line. He kind of busted my balls. I'd called him like on Tuesday, and he was like, well, the staffs that are organized were calling me on Sunday. I was like, bro, you had no idea. I was getting through TSA pre-check. Um, but I didn't talk to him about San Diego State. I just, uh, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, the tape tells me all I need to know. I've watched them play a lot. Uh, I heard my guys. I was in the back. I heard my guys. They're right, man. At least they're regurgitating the messaging that I'm getting them. We got to be really, really tough. You know, we have got to embrace the physical battle, and then we have got to be strong and resilient, and all of the things, quite frankly, that we have been over the last ten days. I just hope we have enough gas in the tank to continue that mission. Hey, Andy, Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Um, you've been doing this for a long time, and I'm sure a week like this is a lot of fun, but. With all the changes that have happened between the portal and NIL and other aspects of the game, is the job still fun? And if it feels like some of that's being lost, how do you get some of that fun back? You know what? I I, um, I run hard, really, in, in, in every endeavor. I run hard in my job. I run hard in the fun area. Uh, I, I try to find joy in the journey, regardless of what the journey may look like. And this group has, has brought me some joy. It's not easy. Now, you, when you look over there at me tomorrow, I'm not going to look like a very joyful person. I'm, I, uh, I, may, I may project it differently than you may envision. It won't be quite like this. I feel like I've got this aura on me right now. I mean, I've got the lights, and I'm sure it's, I'm sure, I'm sure it's a great optic out there. Uh, I, but I, I, tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I won't look very joyful, but I am. I, I'm, I'm proud of this group, and I'm going to try to drive them as hard as I can drive them and help them as much as I can help them. To your point, yeah, things have changed, man. And I, I don't, I don't sit around and put a lot of time in thinking about things that I can't control. Uh, I try to avoid frustration as much as possible because I think it's a useless emotion. Um, and adapt or die, you know. So we've got to adapt. There's a lot of things that I think are good. There's a lot of things that I think are bananas. Uh, but uh, I'm going to just try to do the best I can uh, in my position at UAB. Uh, to get this program to places like this as often as possible. Coach, I wanted to ask you real quick, you mentioned a lot of players earlier and we talked about the depth, but could you just talk about the importance and the uh, what Chris Coleman has meant to this team? Man, I love Chris Coleman. What a story. Uh, I'm sure you guys are somewhat familiar with his story. He graduated uh, from high school, Winsboro, Louisiana. Uh, I think he was like 6'1", a buck 60. Uh, had no opportunity, so what did he do? He went and got a job. And, and so everybody, we've all had jobs that, you know, we reflect back on, hey, I've worked here, hey, I worked there. But he worked for two years at Walmart uh, and then grew uh, and actually was the driver for a teammate of his to get a tryout at an NAI school. He was the only guy that had a car. So he took him down there and got in the game, and the rest is history. They ended up giving him a scholarship. He was freshman of the year in the league, and then one thing led to another. And him and Yaks, uh, especially Alejandro, you know, EG's been here. Eric Gaines was here with LSU, obviously. In a, I don't think he made it to this room. He was back there in the back. I don't think he got to the dice. So a different role for him. But our guys are approaching this honestly. I mean, there's a seriousness about it. I, I, I want them because we, we don't want this to be – uh, the ultimate goal, we want to try to extend this thing as much as possible. Uh, but but I also want them to um, appreciate what they have earned. And so my guys, honestly, are kind of approaching this with a Christmas Eve-like naivete that you don't see a lot uh, in, in this sport. So uh, they're excited to be here, and I know they'll play excited. Uh, I just want us to play good because we're going to have to play good because San Diego State is really good. Afraid we're out of time for Coach Kennedy. We've got to cut him loose. They're not afraid. See, <laughs> Thank see, you. See Paul McCaw from UAB Sports Information if you need more. Thank you, Coach.
It's a pleasure to welcome San Diego State student athletes Lamont Butler, Darian Trammell, and Jaden Ledee to the stage. Uh, Lamont is a Mountain West all defensive team member. Uh, Jaden, first team all Mountain West, and Darian is a starting guard. So we welcome those gentlemen. A couple reminders um, as a courtesy to those in the room, please silence your cell phones during this session. Um, when you have a question, raise your hand and we'll get a microphone holder to your area. Uh, please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question. Um, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we'll address questions in the room first and get to Zoom as time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited in this room. Uh, the NCAA Media Hub will have all video and audio available uh, following these sessions. And if you could please direct questions to a specific player um, as you ask your questions and that'll make things easier on the audio people. So let's go ahead and uh, open it up to questions for these three student athletes. Well, to break the ice a little bit, let me just uh, ask each of you, starting with Lamont, and then we'll work our way down the line, maybe just uh, quick thoughts about being here in Spokane and about facing UAB. Lamont? Uh, yeah, uh, we're really excited to be here. Um, you know, March Madness is something that we all dream of. You know, last year we had an incredible run, and, you know, this year we were here to show that it wasn't just a one-year thing, that we can do it again. So uh, we're very excited, and we can't wait. Yeah, we're really blessed to be here in Spokane to play tomorrow. Um, it's a bless blessing to be in March Madness. Um, we just want to take care of business and do our jobs and make it run like we did last year. Uh, yeah, this is how, I mean, why some of us came here. Um, this is why most people play college basketball is to be in this seat, these seats and in this environment. So it's a blessing, like Jaden said, to be here, and we're trying to seize this opportunity. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Talk about last year's uh, run and what you guys had in recent places. Uh, and talk about maybe why this team has improved in ways that you guys didn't. Yeah, last year was special. Um, we brought a lot of good pieces back, obviously, from last year. So we kind of know what exactly what it takes. Um, and it was all about passing on the, the tradition to the younger guys who haven't been a part of it. And I feel like we've done a great job with that. Uh, we had a great uh, preseason. Um, regular season, we played a lot of great teams, a lot of hostile environments. So I think we're just set up to do it. Uh, we challenged ourselves early on in the season, so now we're here to show it. Jaden? Yeah, just to piggyback off what Darion said, I mean, we, we kind of got a, a few guys, you know, that were here last year for the run. And um, we got the new guys who've been here with us all year. and We've been trying to just rub off on what we've learned in this tournament last year. So just the experience we got throughout the year and from last year, we can all gel it together make a run this year. Lamont? Yeah, to echo off of what they said, you know, experience is key for us. Um, like you said, we got a lot of guys coming back um, who, who experienced what it was last year. So uh, uh, we're going to be ready for that. And then, um, you know, the new guys, they're really good. And they're going to really help us, um, you know, go on this run. More questions? <coughs> for Darian? Uh, I mean, the main thing is don't panic. Um, at the end of the day, um, they're, they're going to be scrambling a around a lot. So just being solid with the ball and, and making sure we make our reads um, as solid as possible and, and getting it where we know the ball is supposed to be is, is key. Um, but it definitely is just keeping our cool and, and just being basketball players. I feel like that's what this game is going to come down to with all the scrambling and, and just how long and athletic they are. Just This is a basketball game. So it's all about just being smart with it. Lamont? Yeah, I'll just say uh, being organized is going to be key. Uh, that's going to uh, take a lot for me and Darion because we have to recognize it, like you said. Um, you know, it can 
we can't let it speed us up um, and you know, let us go a while because that's how they want us to play because of all the switching defenses. So uh, just stay organized and then you know, keep our pace up and uh, you know, we'll be able to, to, to handle it. More questions? Darion, let's start with you. Uh, it's definitely a good mix of both. Uh, we obviously have to rebound. I mean, that's been the key of the game for, I mean, pretty much every game we've had this season. So it's nothing new. Um, I think we kind of worked our way to be pretty physical inside and and take care of the rebounding battle. And obviously, let me terminate is something we do really well um, already. So it's all about just just keeping our composure. You know, I mean, in this environment, it's very easy to get uh, out of character or get sped up. So it's all about having that experience and knowing that we've been here before. So it's all about just keeping our cool and obviously rebounding. Jaden? Yeah, I mean, defense and rebounding usually is the key to games. So, I mean, we can control that, you know, control the glass, you know, limit our turnovers. I think we got a good chance of, you know, coming out victorious tomorrow. Lamont? Rebounding is definitely a key factor in this game. Um, you know, one of their best players, number three, he's, he's one of the best offensive rebounders um, you know, in the country on the, and on their team. So uh, we're going to be really focused on him. And then they got some other guys that really crashed. So uh, we're going to be locked in on that aspect. More questions for these three? All right. We'll let San Diego State student athletes go, and we'll have Coach Dutcher up in a moment. Thank you, guys. Post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com once we're completed here. So check there uh, throughout the day.
I would I'd love to see that. Yeah. Quick reminder to have your cell phone silenced during this session. If you're joining on Zoom, please raise your hand and we'll uh, acknowledge you as time allows. And we'll go ahead and ask Coach Dutcher to uh, please make an opening statement, an overview, and then uh, we'll open it up for questions. Coach? First of all, we're in the East Regional. We're sp playing in Spokane, Washington. That's about as far west as you can get, but we're excited to be here to get a couple games on the West Coast, hopefully. Uh, we've prepared hard. Uh, we're healthy and we're ready to go and excited for our opportunity to uh, see if we can win some games on college basketball's biggest stage. Questions for Coach Dutcher. Hey, Dutch. As you know, John Schaefer, San Diego Sports 760. Um, what is it about this UAB team that creates challenges with the athleticism, the way they switch their defenses? What type of challenge is this? You know, they're older. You know, you're not seeing a lot of sophomores and freshmen out there, juniors and seniors that have played a lot of basketball. Uh, everybody on the floor is dangerous offensively, which is rare. Usually there's one or two guys you key on, but uh, if you don't pay attention to everyone out there, uh, anyone on that floor is capable of putting up 20, 25 points. So that's a concern that we're going to have to do a good job defensively. Uh, they're the number two, 22 uh, ranked offensive rebounding team in the country. Everybody knows we've struggled sometimes rebounding the ball, and so we have to make sure we play defense at a high level and then finish with a rebound. Uh, Mark Siegel with San Diego Union Tribune. You always talk about the NCAA tournament's all about matchups. So how do you rate this matchup? Is it a good matchup for you? Is it a, is it a rough matchup? Where, where, do you, where do you fall on that? As far as the matchup with UAB, a lot of times, somewhere across the, the season, you've played someone that plays like the team you're going to. And really, nobody plays like UNAB, UAB that we've played. They play multiple defenses. The Mountain West is predominantly man, and then they'll mix in some 1-3-1 one, one zone. Uh, UAB plays 1-3-1 one, one to man. They play 2-3 to man. They 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court press into the 2-3. They play straight man. And so... We're going to have to adjust to uh, uh, switching defenses and be comfortable knowing that maybe as coaches, we're not going to have as great a control over the game as what we do when we play a straight defense. So sometimes it's going to be about players making plays, but that's what March is about, players making plays to win games. And so this will be the perfect setting for that. Dutch, can you, can you just comment on the play of their, um, their forward, their 6'9", Yaxel Lendenberg, and, and what kind of makes him unique and able to have the success he's had this year? I mean, he's as close to Degenhardt from Boise as will play. He's really important to them. He can shoot the open three, but if you go out there and take the three away, he's going to drive by you. Uh, he can post up, and so he's, he can score at all three levels. He shoots it, he drives it, and he posts it. And then you add rebounding to that, and he's super dangerous. So... We're going to have our hands full with him, whether it's uh, Jay Pal, Elijah, or at times Jaden. Uh, he's going to be a challenge for us uh, at the defensive end. Um, fairly or unfairly, the way college basketball works, um, teams like yours are judged by what they do in this game and maybe the next game, and not what you've done in the last 34 games. Um, a, do you like that? Uh, and B, um, do you just sort of accept that and embrace it? You're judged every day in this business. <laughs> every possession, every win, every loss, you're going to be judged in coaching. So you got to have a thick skin. Uh, you got to know what you're doing is right, believe in what you're doing, and believe in your kids. And that's what we do. I mean, uh, no matter how this goes, uh, I said uh, two years ago when we lost to Creighton in the first round, people wondered if we'd ever win an NCAA tournament game. Last year we won five games, and People don't think we'll ever lose one now. So uh, we'll see what it is when we get on the floor. We'll be ready for our moment. Uh, we'll play hard. Uh, we'll play smart. And uh, we'll let it all hang out on the floor. Dutch, Andy Kennedy talked about the fact that you guys go back maybe three decades in terms of knowing each other. What's your relationship like with Andy? What do you think of, obviously, I mean, he's done an amazing job at, at UAB. 
Yeah, well, Andy and I were both assistants a long time ago recruiting against each other, and that's competitive. And then I followed his career. I mean, he's had an amazing career. You know, SEC Coach of the Year twice, uh, uh, stepped in for Huggins at Cincinnati, uh, has done a great job now at UAB. So uh, just the fact that he and I are still coaching means we've done something successfully. This is a hard business to survive in, and we both survived, and to a degree we both thrived in the business. Do you have a, I mean, you obviously see on tape what they do tactically, but do you have a sense for what type of kids he has, um, you know, being in the mid-major and, and kind of have to find guys who maybe, <clears throat> you know, don't have five stars and aren't highly touted? Um, and just the personality, what kind of personalities does he have on that team? Yeah, I mean, they look a lot like we did when we're having great success. They got great length. They have great experience. You know, they seem to be play with a real level of toughness about them. And so, you know, you could close your eyes and switch uniforms and both teams look like each other. So uh, talented non-Power 5 teams that play the right way, that play hard, that compete at a high level. And so it should be a real uh, challenging game for both of us tomorrow. More questions for Coach? Anything? All right, we'll turn you loose, Coach. Thank you very much for Thanks, your time. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Appreciate it.
I was a 25th year senior. Chuck, am I good?
All right, we welcome Yale student athletes to the stage. Matt Noling, August Mahoney, and Danny Wolf. Matt is honorable mention All Ivy League, August a starting guard, and Danny Wolf first team All Ivy League. Uh, we'll make the usual reminders um, to uh, silence your cell phones, please. Uh, as a courtesy to those in the room, please provide your name and your media affiliation each time you ask a question during this session. If you're joining on Zoom, please uh, raise your, use your raise hand function and we'll address questions in the room first and then get to Zoom as time allows. Uh, recording press conferences in this room on cell phones and cameras is prohibited. You can visit the NCAA Media Hub for recordings and transcripts of all these sessions. And if you would, please direct questions to a specific player when you have them. And if not, I will uh, help sort it out and may, you may not get what you'd like. So, um, we'll go ahead and start with questions for these three student athletes. Uh, so I guess for for her, oh, sorry, for any of you guys, the I think you guys by mileage had the longest trip of any team in the tournament. And sorry for the squeakiness. Um, kind of what was your travel schedule looking like, and kind of now as you've been here, settled in, kind of how are you all kind of just adjusting to the being out here? Matt, let's start with you and work our way down. Uh, yeah, so we left campus at 6 a.m. on, what day was that? Yesterday, uh, 6 a.m. yesterday, we flew out here. Um, got here, practiced, uh, relaxed at the hotel a little bit, um, and practiced again today. So it was an early morning, and then the three-hour time changes a lot. Um, but we're getting adjusted, and we're getting ready to go, so. Yeah, also, um, we were in Spokane earlier this year, so. I think I think that gives us a, a comfortability that uh, other teams here don't have. Um, so we're we're used to the area. We're staying in the same hotel that we did when we played Gonzaga. So um, yeah, yeah the, the, the flight might have been long, but uh, we're used to the area, and I think that's going to help us. Danny. Yeah, piggybacking off of what they said um, earlier in the year, and especially last year, we had a really difficult travel schedule, non-conference, and um, I think that just gave us a mindset of it's what's going to be needed, and um, just having the privilege of being able to charter and. Being able to spread our legs out on a five-hour flight, it's a big, uh, big plus, especially for tall guys. Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole with the Opelika Auburn News. Uh, 
question for August. I know you're generally a three-point shooter, but you've been shooting especially well from distance. I think it's like your last nine games, but just what's been working for you from deep? Is it just a matter of getting hot or, or anything else? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a mixture of just being confident and then also just trusting my teammates. Um, every, every time, every, every lineup we put on the floor, there's four other guys that can make a play. So, um, so sometimes I'm open and then sometimes I'm getting screens and when I come off screens, they, they got to they gotta worry about the per person setting the screen. So I get a lot of clean looks and um, just credit my teammates finding me in areas that I can thrive in and, uh, and then also just trusting my work. I put in so many hours over the years to find, find myself in positions like this. So why be tentative and why not believe? So when I, whenever, whenever I have a clean look, I shoot it with a lot of confidence. And uh, like you said, the last couple of games have been falling for me. I guess for Matt, what have you seen defensively on tape from this Auburn team, particularly their their ability to pr defend on the perimeter? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're really great defensively. Uh, their full court pressure, their pressure on the ball. Um, so we just have to be ready to go. Uh, don't let them take them out of our offense. Um, you know, trust what we do and, and be able to run our sets in a good scoring area. Um, you know, they have great defenders, really athletic, great size, great shot blocking. So we have to trust what the coaches are saying and trust our work at the same time. Uh, for Danny, what have you seen out of Janai Broom? How do you defend a guy like that? Yeah, um, he's a great player. He has tremendous size. Um, but I think it's just the same thing that Matt was going off of. They're physical. Um, they're going to pressure the ball. And um, we just got to stick with what we do. And um, can't get into foul trouble early. And um, got to trust our defense. Got to trust each other. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a good fight. And I'm excited for it. Justin Ferguson, the Auburn Observer. Matt, you guys are one of the best teams in the country at not turning the ball over. That's something that Auburn really tries to rely on on defense. What's the key to y'all being so successful in that area and, and you know, not having empty possessions a lot? Um, I think trusting each other. And, um, you know, we've been playing together now three years pretty consistently. Uh, so knowing where we want to get the, get the ball and trusting where each other are going to be. Um, and in practice, you know, we work a lot. We have a drill called Z passing, you know, coming, coming back to the ball, meeting the ball. Uh, being strong with it, um, so just trusting what we do and you know knowing where each other are going to be at. I guess for August, I think fifteen of you y'all won fifteen of your last eighteen games. What can you kind of say about the confidence of this team and, and the importance of being a team that that's sort of riding a hot streak going into March? Yeah, um, our coaching staff did a great job scheduling our non-conference where we were playing a lot of really high-level teams. Um, so when we got into our conference, we kind of uh, were, were really prepared for what was ahead. And um, like you said, and like Matt just said, we, we, we've been playing with each other for two, three years consistently. So, so we're, we're starting to gel really nicely now. And um, it's always nice when you're playing your best basketball in March. And I think, I think that's where we are. And I'm, I'm excited to, to play tomorrow and showcase that. This is for any players, Brian Hamilton from The Athletic. It, the conference tournament expansion talk seems to have the offshoot of more power conference teams making it less low majors, mid majors. Do you guys have any reaction to that? Obviously, it's a dream for schools like Yale to get to this stage. What do you, what's your reaction to expansion that might favor more power conference teams? Matt, let's start with you and work our way down. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I think it's great for a school like us to be able to compete in the Ivy League tournament and have an opportunity to go play in March Madness. You know, that's know what we look forward to all year that's our goal all year um, so I think it's good to continue to have smaller smaller schools and smaller leagues be able to be, uh, be, able to be represented in the Ivy or in the NCAA tournament so uh, no real other thoughts on that yeah for me um, year after year the mid-major the small school proves that they, they, they can play with the big schools um, every year it seems like there's at least one or two or maybe even three small schools higher seeds that not only win one game but Make make a deep run, so um, I think that just proves that we belong here, and um, other other mid majors also belong here, and um, it, it's it's a matter of just getting here, and like Matt said, it's a dream of all of ours to be here, so um, it, it's a it's a pleasure, and we're all really grateful grateful for it. Yeah, I think that uh, especially nowadays that the talent pool in college basketball is so great, um, and it's what makes March Madness special is getting the platform for these players to shine and um, prove themselves against these bigger. Um, power conference teams and I think that 
taking away from that would do a disservice to um, what makes March Madness so special. We have time for one or two more questions, if there are any. All right, we'll dismiss the Yale student athletes and we'll be back with Coach Jones in just a moment.
I would say that's from both of you. Besides that, All right, we welcome Coach Jones to the stage, and we will uh, make a couple quick reminders. As a courtesy, uh, please silence your cell phones. Uh, upon asking a question, if you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Please provide your name and media affiliation. And if you're joining on Zoom, uh, please use the raise hand function, and we'll address questions virtually after we get to those in the room. Um, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this room is not prohib is, uh, prohibited. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick op opening statement from Coach, and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach? Thank you very much. Uh, just like everybody else, we're really excited to play in the tournament, excited to be here. Uh, coincidentally, this is our second trip to Spokane this year. We were fortunate to play against um, Gonzaga early in the year, so it's kind of old hat for us, and it's a little bit of a familiarity for our team. And again, we're excited and looking forward to play uh, tomorrow. Questions for Coach? Adam Cole with the Opelika Auburn News. James, I know you guys have played Auburn and this Bruce Pearl staff, not same team, but in the last three years. How much of an advantage is there with that, if any? Um, I'm not certain how much of an advantage it, it is for us to play this team again. Um, you know, they're really good, they're well coached. Um, the team we played several years ago, um, they were extremely talented. And uh, this team is talented as well. Uh, I'm not certain how many pros are on this team, but it's a really good team. They play well together. Um, I haven't digested how long the team has been together in terms of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, but it seems like they've been together for a long time. They run a lot of different stuff, and uh, they do it really well. So we'll have our hands full for us tomorrow, and, uh, we, but we look forward to the opportunity and the challenge. Uh, Caden Frank with the AP. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys have prepped for these moments in your non-conference schedule, you know, traveling up here to play Gonzaga and then uh, Kansas this year. You know, does that give you an edge kind of at the start of the game? Uh, you know, you played against high-level teams and stuff like that. Yeah, how do you feel like that plays into it? Yeah, we, we have a veteran crew. We have four starters from last year. And over the years, we've obviously played a lot of teams like that. Um, so it um, gives our guys a, an opportunity and a chance to understand how good they can be. Um, this year, playing Gonzaga and Kansas, uh, we had 15-point leads, I believe, in both both games, and uh, we led Kansas at halftime. That doesn't happen too often in Allen Fieldhouse. So we feel good about what we're doing, and I felt um, back then when we played Kansas, if we got a, an opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, that um, I like our chances playing on a neutral court against basically anybody in the country. And we got anybody in the country with, with Auburn, so we have to be ready to play. Coach Mark Ziegler from San Diego Union Tribune. Got a question uh, about San Diego guys. You got two on your team. Came all the way across country. What is it about San Diego and why do you recruit San Diego and just talk specifically about these two guys? Well, there's nothing about San Diego that's different than most places in the country for us. We just have to go places and uh, you know turn over some rocks to try to find kids that are good enough academically and athletically to play for us. And, and fortunately for us, we found two really good players in uh, the city of San Diego. Um, Yasin and, and Devin are both tremendous young men. Uh, Devin's a sophomore. He hasn't had a great opportunity yet, but his opportunity is coming. Uh, Yasin has done a tremendous job for us. And, you know, I've listened to every game we've played, and a lot of the commentators talk about he could start on a lot of other teams. He just happens to be behind a kid that's the best defensive player in the league. So, really good players, really good young men, and uh, they happen to live in the, one of the nicest places in the country. So that's one reason to go recruit there, because it's the nicest place on the planet. Hey, Coach, uh, Matt Cohen, AL.com. Uh, you mentioned kind of the trip out to Gonzaga earlier this year. I guess your players also mentioned kind of staying in the same hotel now, the, 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 the charter to play. Kind of what, what did your travel schedule look like, and how much did maybe the game earlier this season kind of help you guys plan for, I think you have the longest trip by mileage of any team in, in, in the uh, tournament. Yeah, you know, for us, this is old hat. You know, um, last year we traveled to Hawaii. Uh, this year we tra traveled to Moncton, Canada to play in a tournament. You don't know where Moncton, Canada is, do you? Yeah, yeah, I was there and I still don't know where it is. <laughs> um, so 
our travel is, is, you know, we don't charter and, you know, to come here on a charter was nice and easy for us. You know, it was just a long flight is all it was. So it's just like a bus ride to uh, Cornell, basically. But actually, it's a little bit nicer because all our guys had a full seat by themselves. So it was even nicer than a uh, bus ride to Cornell. So nothing new for us. Uh, Caden Frank again with the AP. Um, yeah, you guys have been to the tournament, you know, four times in the in the past or since 2016. Uh, that 2016 team obviously pulling the upset. You know, what was special about that team, and what can this team replicate to, um, you know, take another step in the tournament? Yeah, I think that the uh, the best thing I can say about the 2016 team that they were really connected, um, and we had didn't have as much depth on that team as I think that we have on this one. Uh, we had three really good players, Brandon Sherrod, who's on my staff right now, Justin Sears, who was the Ivy League Player of the Year, and Makai Mason. And uh, those three players um, took turns being the best player on our team. Um, so we have a little bit of that this year as well with, with our group, where on a given day, you, it's hard to tell who our best player is. Um, so they were very special, and um, they were connected. And that was a, a huge uh, thing in our favor. And, it was like a home game, though, for us playing in Providence. Um, it was real close to our campus, and um, I actually just rewatched a highlight video from that year, and the crowd was is all yell. So I don't know that we'll have that here tomorrow. I hope so. More questions for Coach. Brian Stalls, AuburnSports.com. Uh, I don't know how much you've watched the Tigers this year, but they have a couple guys in Chad Baker, Mazzara, and Katie Johnson who like to kind of instigate and get under opposing players' skin. How do you prepare your team for players like that, that you know, like to instigate, like to get in people's faces and stuff like that? Yeah, we have one guy in our league like that. Actually, we have a team of guys like that, Cornell. So there's a Chris Mann and Isaiah Gray. Um, they could just change jerseys and they could be the same guy. So, you know, I think that Auburn wants to punch you in the face um, when the game starts. They want to come after you. So, you know, we have to be ready for that. And same thing with teams that we played in the past. It won't be much of a difference. Our guys have been battle tested and they'll be ready. But those two young men you talked about in, uh, directly, they're very good. They're tough. And that toughness helps uh, the Auburn team to be successful. Anything more for Coach Jones? All right. Thank you, Coach.
Like now, it's fine. Uh, but if the press conferences are going on, I don't think she'll let you. And it kind of creates a bad press for her. Hi, Jim. It has been a while. How are you? No, I'm none the way tired. <laughs> Wish I was, but I'm not. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the women's time. You're going going like next. Yeah, that's great. You still doing it? You doing a little writing now and again? Or? Um, he, not this weekend. I haven't talked to him for a while. No, he was. <coughs> oh, cool. Did you really? Yeah, not bad. I mean, not not anything crazy, but they've been good. We've been competitive. We're decent every year, so it's better than being shitty every year. <laughs> You too, Jim.
All right, it's a pleasure to welcome Auburn student athletes to the stage. We have Janai Broom, Jalen Williams, Denver Jones. Janai is a first team all SEC player, Jalen a second team all SEC, and Denver is a starting guard for the Tigers. A couple of reminders. Um, as a courtesy, please silence your uh, cell phones while you're in this session. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone holder to your area. Uh, please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during this session. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function for questions. We'll address questions in the room first and then get to the virtual world as time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this room is not permitted. So uh, you'll have access to those in the NCAA Media Hub shortly after this session is uh, complete, courtesy of the Hammond folks and ASAP. There will also be transcripts. Um, and once again, if you can direct your question to a specific player, that's very helpful for the, for the audio people. Um, if you want each of the players to answer a question, then I'll, uh, I'll help out with that. But uh, direct questions to a specific student athlete, that's very helpful. And uh, we'll go ahead and take questions for Auburn student athletes. Well, let's, let's start with a general statement from each of you uh, gentlemen on uh, just being in Spokane and your first round matchup. And we'll start with Janai and work our way down. Um, uh, I feel like this team, myself and the coaching staff is uh, excited to be in Spokane um, and excited to play our first game in March Madness. You know, uh, it's every kid's dream to play in this game, in this atmosphere. Um, but we're excited to play Yale and ready to get to it. Jalen? Yeah, um, no, this is my first time being out here. So I wanted to go somewhere I didn't, I've never been in my life. So this is the place I wanted to be, um, especially with this group of teammates and coaching staff. And um, leading into the tournament after the SEC tournament, winning that and like coming into here with confidence was a big key to being here. Denver? Man, I'm just excited to be in this position I'm in. Uh, I always, my bad. I always dream of being here uh, in March Madness. Uh, this is my first time actually being here and actually being in Washington, in Spokane, Washington. And I'm just really excited to play and get, get to the first round. Questions for the Auburn Tigers? Uh, Julian Mitchell, WVTM 13 in Birmingham. I think, Jalen, you said it there. This team is coming off an incredible week weekend, playing three great games in the SEC tournament. What is the confidence level right now, and how do you all feel after winning the SEC tournament, having some days off, and now getting here in Spokane? Um, to be honest, it, it hasn't really felt like we had any days off <laughs> since, like, the postseason started. But, um, you know, having a day off the – day of Selection Sunday was basically like I travel back to Auburn and getting a field back and then we're back to practicing again. So we always are prepared at the best of our abilities. Our coaching staff get us to that point to where um, like they give us the answers to the test and we just got to take advantage of it. Tim Booth from the AP. Uh, this is for any of you guys. You guys lost uh, two straight midseason at that, on the road, and then I think you guys have lost once since then. Maybe what what changed for you guys in SEC play that's allowed you to play as well as you have over these last six weeks? Denver, let's start with you, and then we'll work our way this way. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Why have you guys played as well as you have over the last six weeks? Uh, honestly, uh, really just listen to the, the great game plan that our coaches uh, have put in play. Um, thanks to our scout team as well. Uh, they prepared us great for the teams that we play uh, in the SEC. So uh, I'll probably say kudos to our coaches and our scout team. Jalen? I would say for me and like my teammates, we're, like, we're older on the team, so we understand the whole process. So like six weeks ago, like, BP would tell us, like, this is it. Like, this is our team. So, like, we got to go out there and give it our all. And I feel like that hit us, and that just made us more locked in with the scout and the things we eat, like, the, when we go to sleep and those things that really helped us throughout the rest of the last six weeks. Janai? Uh, six weeks ago, um, 
you know, we was eight in the country, I think, before we went and lost those two games in a row. So uh, I feel like um, losing those two was a wake-up call, you know, because uh, this team is very special. And um, we could have won both those games easily. Um, and we knew that, so we, you know, we just got to limit and tweak a couple of things, and uh, we can go a long way. And uh, since then, we kind of turned it around. How you doing? Uh, Michael Bethley with the Black Lens here in Spokane, Washington. Um, Spokane is, a, is a, um, a, a space, a city that has a little diversity, but um, it's growing. From a from young black male's perspective, what would you say to some other young black males who are trying to just work hard at getting to this next level of playing? Uh, what would you encourage them or say to them to do? I'll start it off. So, um, you know, me growing up in a small town, like, there wasn't really much there. So, like, I didn't know that growing up there because, I mean, like, that was the norm for me. So, like, I just loved playing basketball. So, if you keep playing and you keep enjoying the things, you do the right things, God is going to bless you. So, like, I ended up doing the right things, going to Atlanta, driving four and a half hours. And, like, it's just the – you got to make sacrifices if you want to be – who you want to be in life. So that's all I'll have to say. Janai, do you have thoughts? Uh, oh, kind of like what uh, Jalen said, you know, uh, life's about sacrifices and um, choices in life, you know. Um, so at a, at a young age, you know, if you can make the choices and, st and getting in the gym or doing whatever you love, if you're playing football, you know, getting in the field and uh, just working on your craft uh, rather than, you know, going out partying, you know, I appreciate everybody. Uh, all of us would have liked to have a little more fun growing up as, uh, you know, like our friends would do. But like Jalen said, sacrifice is necessary. Denver, do you have anything to add? I agree with Jalen. Uh, you have to enjoy doing what you're doing. Uh, you got to keep working hard at it uh, no matter what the outcome is. Uh, I know for me, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. Uh, and for me, that was uh, going up to Memphis and playing prep school up there. So... If I was them, I'd just say you have to make a lot of sacrifices in order to get where you want to get to. More questions for these three. Nick Gibson, Spokesman Review. This is for any of you. What was your reaction to finding out three Alabama schools were all sent up here to Spokane? Uh, I was kind of surprised. Jalen? Um, for me, you know, I just kind of focus on, like, our team. But, I mean, it is special for, like, the state in general because, you know, you got a lot of fans that are Auburn fans, Alabama fans, and people that went to UAB, and it's just fans of all three. So, like, I mean, it's a little special to have all three of these teams in the tournament. And then <coughs> we're just going to see who advances the longest. Denver? Uh, me, I was a little shocked. Uh, seeing all three of us on the same side, but like Jay Will said, it is special seeing three Alabama teams here on the same side, and uh, most likely they probably gonna be fans of all three of us, so fans to come watch us play anytime. So I feel like it was kind of a blessing too at the same time having three teams from Alabama here in Spokane. More questions? All right, we'll dismiss these three and bring Coach up in just a moment.
right, we're excited to welcome Coach Pearl to the stage. Uh, as a reminder, please um, silence your cell phones. Uh, as you raise your hand to ask a question, please provide your name and media affiliation. Each time you ask a question, if we have anything, uh, any questions on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we'll get to you as time allows. And uh, one more reminder, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this space is not prohibited. Uh, video and transcripts will be pr provided at the NCA Media Hub. So Coach, we'll ask for a quick opening statement if you don't mind, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, we're very excited about uh, being in this NCAA tournament and uh, being selected as part of this field. Um, we are uh, uh, have great respect for our opening round opponent, Yale. Uh, if you look at the Ivy League in the last eight years, how that league has performed. They've won three games, Yale beating uh, Baylor back in uh, 2016. Uh, last year, uh, obviously, uh, when Princeton has the two-seed upset, excuse me, has the 15-seed upset, uh, the two-seed Arizona. Um, so we, we have great respect for them. We have great respect for their league, great respect for this team and uh, their players and their coaching staff. They, they do a terrific job. They're really, really hard to cover. Um, and with their five out offense it's uh, you know very very uh, it's a it's a unique offense and it's something that we see see some but don't see a ton um, and probably with the area that Yale would be the most underrated is their defense and their rebounding uh, they're a real solid defensive team they play at one of the slower paces in the country but part of the reason is because they'll take good shots on the offensive end which sometimes could take take some time but what people don't appreciate is the fact that it takes you a while with your offense to get a good shot because they're so solid defensively. So um, we know that we'll have to play well to win. Questions for Coach Pearl. Andy Burcham, Auburn Sports Radio. Uh, could you just talk about the, the, the matchup of the, of the two post players in this game, if you would, Coach? Well, you got, um, you know, for me, when you talk about Auburn's matchup in the post, you got to talk about both Dylan Caldwell and Janai Broom. Uh, against uh, Danny Wolf, and um, you know Danny is a is a terrific, uh, terrific player. Um, he's one of the best Jewish basketball players in the country, and uh, I'm one of the few Jewish coaches in the country. That doesn't make me one of the best. I'm just one of the few. And uh, by the way, congratulations to Keith Dambrot today from Duquesne, um, also a member of the tribe. Um, you know Danny's a tough cover. He is. Uh, really big he's got great skills uh he's got he can put the ball down the floor he can pass it with either hand he can score over either shoulder he's got a real good feel for the game um and you can say the same thing about Janai Broom. Uh, offensively Janai could score either side and he could score inside out Janai's probably been a three-point shooter um and you know dylan who is a great defender in his own right um and one of the best defenders uh in the SEC, who gets very little recognition because he comes off the bench for us, um, our ability to guard Danny and handle all the things that he can do offensively will go a long way towards whether or not we can win this contest. Tim Booth from the AP. Bruce, obviously you guys got a lot of attention for the run you made last week winning the SEC tournament, but you guys have been pretty good for about six weeks now. Kind of what have you seen? There was that two game losing streak on the road you had in late January. Kind of from your perspective, what turned after that that's led to you guys playing as well as you have since then? You know, I thought even on that road trip we lost at Alabama, that Mississippi State, we were guarding. We were at least guarding. And we were in both games. Um, but we weren't making shots. And so um, with the exception of maybe going down to Florida and getting dominated by the Gators, uh, we were pretty much in every game. So the combination of continuing to guard pretty consistently throughout the year with great effort and energy using 10 guys, um, not getting dominated up on the boards, although there were times when we weren't, didn't always have the advantage, but not getting dominated. And then doing a better job of, of taking advantage of, of, of our offense, better offensive efficiency, getting better shots, not turning the ball over you know, as much and, um, you know, continue to, you know, play unselfishly and actually being a little bit more physical with our offense. You know, you combine all that and, and, and yeah, we've been, we've been playing our best basketball here down the stretch. Hey, 
Hey, Bruce, Mark Ziegler, San Diego Union Tribune. How's it going? Good, Mike. How you doing? Um, I want to ask you about Chad. Um, obviously, he was at San Diego State. JC had some academic issues. What, very fiery player. What, what was behind the decision to take him, and how's he been? Um, is he, has he met your expectations, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah. He, he's met my high expectations. And I got to tell you, the coach at San Diego State had nothing but great things to say about him. As a competitor, as a young man, um, you know, we know how passionate he is, and and um, um, and that went a long way to our wanting our wanting to take him, because uh, he's got a great heart. Um, and then he went to junior college, and he was very successful there. Got his degree, um, and they had the same things to say about him. Um, being in relationship with 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 him, with Chad's important. It's more than just basketball for him. And um, I, I knew that I knew that if we brought him in, I had the kind of coaching staff. We 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 are, we we do um, we hold our kids accountable both on and off the court, and we have a high expectation for them on after on off the court, and we have relationships with them. Uh, this is a ministry more than just coaching. That fit really well with Chad. And then of course, two years later, you know, after he learned from you know sometimes learning from some some mistakes. I promise you that. Um, Last year, when San Diego State made their run, he was rooting for them. But he also recognized that rather than being down in Pensacola, Florida, he could have been at the Final Four. And he missed that opportunity, and he puts that on himself. And, um, and, and now here you, here you are seeing him back in the NCAA tournament. There we go. Uh, Julian Mitchell, WVTM 13 in Birmingham. Uh, Coach, I really thought over those three games in the SEC tournament, you all really really imposed your will and your style on the teams there and brought a physicality and an intensity that you needed to win those games there. Obviously, some physical battles. How do you continue? What has been the message to the team to continue to bring that intensity and that level of play now after you, you really spent a lot there in uh, Nashville? Yeah, I mean, I thought we played really hard. I thought we didn't take possessions off. Um, I thought that, you know, we stayed down in our stance. We extended where it was time to extend. We tried to defend without fouling. And um, um, and so I do, th I do think, again, there was, we, we, were, um, we were on a mission to go win the tournament. You know, we talked about trying not to lose again. That, that was something that's sort of been our focus and one of the things that it's, you know, one of the things that it's going to take. When you finish second in a league like that this year, and, you know, late in the year we went to Knoxville with about four games left, and we knew... If we could have won that game, then we were we had a real good chance to win the league regular season. We we were right there, uh, but Dalton Connect was just tremendous that night, particularly in the second half. And once we lost that game there, the championship regular season championship was lost. So we began to then focus on what what what's the next championship out there, and that of course was the SEC tournament. More questions for Coach? Anything else? You said there had a mission to win the SEC tournament. Now a mission here. I know you had said that this team uh, plan to win, not lose again. Uh, what is it about this team that you feel right now that you all are in the driver's seat on making a run here? Well, I don't know that we're in the driver's seat. I don't. Um, I think that I think that we're, what we've always done and what I've tried to do is just compartmentalize this, make it smaller for the players. Um, we have to win two games to get to the Sweet 16. Okay, we can't, you know, we can't do that until we win the first one. And so, oftentimes, the toughest game in this tournament is to win is the first one. And so, we understand that, you know, you know, if we played Yale a lot of times over a period of time, we would have the advantage because we're deeper and we're a little bigger. And folks would say we're better. We're, we we have a better seed than they do, but they can beat us in a game. Absolutely, they led Kansas for 30 minutes this year. Uh, Y'all saw them in Spokane play with Gonzaga and had, had a, you know, had a double-digit lead at some point early in that game. So, uh, but but we there are four teams in this pot, us and Yale, and um, 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 San Diego State and UAB, and those are the four teams. One of those teams is going to the Sweet 16, and so that's how we're com com compartmentalizing it. Bruce, I know you're th you're thrilled to be in the tournament in any capacity, but. You're a four seed SEC tournament champion, and you get shipped 2,000 miles from campus. Was there some disappointment with that? And do you find some uh, novelty in the fact that you've got you, UAB, and, and Bama all here? Well, first of all, I, you know, I don't spend a lot of time complaining about seeding. 
it's a, it's a it's a tough process, and there are great teams. Look, you gotta you gotta beat great teams if you're gonna advance in this tournament. So, it it really that doesn't matter. And I'm I'm thrilled to be in Spokane. What a beautiful city, and the reception from the people have been but has been terrific. I just would rather come here and go fish with Mark than necessarily make, have my fans have to come all the way out here. It, it, it is a hardship. The, part, the pod system was created so that your fan base, and as much as that your families of your players, have the opportunity to, to see them play in this one shining moment situation. So yeah, sometimes some things don't make as much sense, but look, we, uh, we again, we're thrilled to be in this thing. And uh, this is, I, I think, the, the fifth time that Auburn has been in it, maybe the fifth time in six years or something like that. So I'm, I am not going to complain one bit. Anything more for Coach Pearl? All right, thank you, Coach.
good looking shirt. I like your shirt. Okay, we welcome College of Star Charleston student athletes to the stage. We have uh, Rain Smith, Bryce Butler, and Kobe Rogers. And I'll issue my standard reminders here before we throw it open to questions. But uh, please remember to silence your cell phones as a courtesy to all those uh, working in this environment. As you, um, if you want to ask a question in the room here, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone holder to you. Um, and when you ask a question, please identify yourself by your name and your media affiliation each time you ask. Um, if you're joining on Zoom, uh, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll uh, entertain questions in the room first and then go to the virtual world. Um, recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this room is prohibited, so please refrain from that. There will be audio, video, and transcripts up at the NCAA Media Hub not too long after this session ends. And if you can, please direct questions to a specific player. That helps our audio folks. But if you want to ask the question to each player, I'll take, uh, I'll take charge and, and lead, lead the way in that realm. And guys, if you lean close to your microphone, it'll cut back on the feedback. So uh, first of all, I'll ask if there's any questions for these three gentlemen. Let's go right here first. Uh, for <coughs> Kobe and Bryce, uh, is this completely different than the D2 tournament? Or, I mean, when you walk out into this kind of an arena, is it like holy smokes, or is it pretty similar feeling? Um, I think it's really different, actually. You know, we got to treat it like it's another basketball game, but um, at the same time, you know, there was a lot less media, a lot less cameras, a lot less, you know, March Madness kind of feel to it. Um, but I'm excited, right? This is kind of where I've always wanted to get to, and now that I'm here, uh, it feels like a great accomplishment. Bryce? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Division One, Division Two. there's a difference. And like Kobe mentioned, the attention and uh, when March rolls around, this is what everyone's talking about. And, you know, this is the reason me and Kobe came to Charleston and uh, the belief that we had in PK and the opportunity that he gave us. And that's why we're here. Andrew Miller with the Post and Courier. Uh, Bryce, when... Pat was telling you what your role was going to be and, and coming into the season. Ha has that been pretty much what you thought it was going to be, what he said it was going to be? And then how did that a role for you evolve? Yeah, I mean, um, I just really came in here willing to do whatever it took to win. And uh, whatever PK needed me to do, that's what I was going to be willing to do. And um, from day one, you know, I understood what my role was going to be and, um, you know, just be the best leader I can and do whatever I can to help the team win. Scott Eisberg from Channel 4. Uh, Rain, what was it like to see your family, and, and how did that whole trip happen? Um, yeah, it was awesome having him here. Um, I knew mum was making her way over, but my uh, auntie and uncle were a surprise, which was awesome to see them. I haven't seen them for maybe four or five years, so great seeing them again. And having my mum in the stands is always nice. It's kind of going to give it a little home feeling, kind of good chance they'll probably hear in the crowd too. Um, so it's just great having him here and um, yeah, just lucky to be here. What is March Madness like in Australia? It, it's big. It's talked about. It's You watch it in class and everything like that. And as sports fans, it's on ESPN at home. So it's the reason why I wanted to come over to the U.S. and play college basketball and um, just kind of having that come true has been awesome. Andrew Miller again with the Post and Curry. Kobe, what, just talk about Bryce as a teammate and as a player and then kind of how, how y'all's uh, friendship has evolved over the year and being roommates and everything like that. Um, I would say he's probably one of the best teammates I've ever had. Um, you know, coming in as a senior leader like he is, um, it's easy to kind of follow his lead and, you know, take guidance from him, um, and especially learning from him from the national championship game from just last year, uh, seeing, you know, the heart that he played with um, and determination, you know. <laughs> Luckily, I was on the winning side of that, but, um, you know, that's something that we can always look back on, we can always talk on throughout practice um, and even in the house because we're, <laughs> we're housemates. Um, for, for 
I guess for Bryce, uh, Alabama, uh, what do you see on them in tape, on tape, and um, it, how much, I mean, are they elevated from a CAA opponent, or is it pretty much watching like a CAA opponent? On yeah, uh, obviously Alabama, really good basketball team, and, um, you know, we're, you know, preparing the same way, um, you know, not necessarily focusing on what we're watching, but focusing on, you know, how we prepare and how we go about our daily business. And, you know, everything that we've done has been, you know, the same as it had been all season. Lorraine, last year to this year, just the differences on the team and then what kind of, uh, I don't know if leadership is the right word, but what, what do you take and kind of give to everybody else? Like, hey, this is March Madness, this is the NCAA tournament. Do you, I don't know if you shared that with your teammates or not or all. Yeah, I think I spoke to Kobe a little bit about kind of the March Madness feeling and you want to try and treat it like a, another game and stuff, but it, it's hard to. You see March Madness branding everywhere and it's just like you're kind of in awe a little bit where you're super excited. So it's not really an, another game in the sense, but I think everyone's excited and kind of returning to this stage, it's taking a bit of responsibility and kind of leading the group and kind of telling guys kind of what to expect in it. Uh, Rain, I think we had talked on a Zoom quickly about your uh, your new tattoos this year and how many there are. Any of them basketball related and will there be any March Madness related ones if uh, a win happens here? Yeah, I got uh, one basketball related on the inner part of my forearm and I think maybe when my college career is over there might be March Madness somewhere on me. I don't, I don't really know yet, but probably a good chance. Are, are you guys a little bit more calm, you, Ante, the you know, guys who have been here last year than you were last year? Or I mean, is there a, sense, a more sense of calmness for you guys going into this game as opposed to last year? Yeah, to a certain degree. I s still feel those kind of same nerves and excitement as last year in that sense but also a calmness of like you've been here before and I think that's what we got to try and kind of get to with all the other guys that maybe haven't been on this stage yet so it's still definitely the same feeling of excitement and everything like that. Oh, um, I know like the trip from Charleston was long to Spokane but um, do you have to like adjust to the time changes? I would say definitely, yeah, you do. Um, but you know, we got pros in our in our organization on jet lag and a lot of guys from Australia. So we got a lot of experience here with that and uh, some good information that we can use to help ourselves out there. Rain, any thoughts? Um, yeah, so Coach Michael Cassidy, uh, one of the Australian assistants, he gave us his expertise on uh, jet lag. So we've been kind of going under his guide on how to get adjusted to this uh, three-hour time difference. More questions for these three? Anything? All right. We'll let these guys go and say thank you for your time. Good luck tomorrow.
you asked the question, yeah. He was great. Yeah, that was a great question. I told him, I, if you could sit behind me. <laughs> All right, we will roll over to questions for Coach Kelsey in just a moment, but I'll remind you to please silence your cell phones um, as a courtesy to others in the area. Um, please provide your name and media affili affiliation each time you ask a question, and you can ask by raising your hand, and we'll get a microphone holder to you. If uh, anyone out there in Zoom land is joining, please use the raise hand function. And um, a reminder, please uh, refrain from recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this area. And we will uh, take an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach? Just uh, feel very, very fortunate and blessed uh, to be representing our institution in the national tournament in a amazing part of the country. Uh, been to Spokane before. We came out when I was at Xavier and played Gonzaga. And um, gosh, I just think of the, the passion um, that this city has for basketball. And I found out since I've been here that uh, the nickname that not only they have for themselves, but I guess nationally is Hoop City USA. And um, understandable. So we're just blessed to be here. My family's going up in the mountains and seeing this beautiful part of the country and these passionate basketball fans in this, uh, in this area. If you're listening to this or if you get this on social media or stuff, hey, we can, we'll use as many fans as we can. So come out and cheer for the, cheer for the Cougars. It'll help us a little bit. But um, just really excited. They have the opportunity to play. Uh, Alabama is a phenomenal team. Nate Oates, I believe, is uh, one of the best coaches in the country. Over the last couple of years, you've had some retirements of the icons of our game, like Coach K and Roy Williams and Jim Beheim. Probably missing some. I'm sure I am. And uh, kind of that, you know, the the the, the new the new era. Uh, I I would say Nate Nate is right there. He's unbelievably respected in the coaching fraternity. He's a phenomenal coach. Very very difficult to prepare for. They're unbelievably talented. Um, we obviously have our hands full, but we're excited about the challenge. Questions for Coach. Andrew Miller with the Post and Courier. Pat, what, what has Bryce Butler brought to the, to the team this year? And has he done anything or have you seen anything from him that maybe you didn't know about it that, that you know, for positive wise for the team and team building? I mean, I hope a guy like Bryce Butler knocks on my door and, or asks my daughter in hand in marriage someday. Like he's that caliber of a human being. He is a special, special person. He's so mature. He's so mature beyond his years. Um, you know, in today's day and age with the COVID year and you have fifth last year, Dalton Bolin, I think was like a, a ninth year guy for us. Um, so, so you have that a little bit, but, um, Bryce is just so stinking mature. He's a phenomenal leader. He is, um, soft-spoken. He's a man of relatively few words, but he's the type of guy when he says something and speaks up, the room gets absolutely silent. He has the respect of his teammates not only because of how decorated he is as a player at the Division II level, being an All-American and playing in the national, national championship game, um, but they just respect his toughness and his tenacity and his grit. Um, very, very blessed to say I was able to coach him for his last year of college basketball. Let's go to Zoom real quick for a question from Dan Tortora. Dan, you're up. Danny, out there? All right, we'll stay in the room until we can get him wired in. Here we go. Andrew Miller with the Post and Courier. You're good. Hey, Andrew Miller again from the Post and Courier. Um, do you notice, is there any like calmness to the guys who've been here before the second year in a row? Maybe a little bit, you know, last year everybody's super excited, kind of their first time in more magic, March Madness, but now that they're a little bit calmer, or is it the same? I think experience is always. Uh, you know, a blessing, right? So we preach to our guys every day to stay present, right? Whether it's a June 5th meeting on their first day on campus, uh, it's in the middle of the rigors of, of, of conference play, or it's, you know, right here getting ready to play in the greatest spectacle in American sports. It's just enjoy the moment, enjoy the walkthrough this morning, enjoy the little practice we had over at Gonzaga Prep, uh, which is pretty cool, home of the Bullpups. I thought that was a, a cool nickname. 
Um, so our guys are unbelievably consistent. You know, they're great in film sessions. Uh, they are so on point in scouting, and um, and 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 so you know these bright lights in this big moment, it's not too big for these guys. But yeah, I mean, I I, I sense a little bit. At least I almost feel like I'm that way a little bit, following my own advice. And I mean, I got my son here asking questions at the press conference. He's going to be outside shooting baskets with the guys because my boss Matt Roberts, who's the best AD in the country allows us to have his, our, our families as a part of this. So, you know, it, it's, it's going to be hot tomorrow. It's going to be hot. It's the biggest moment, uh, 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 one of the biggest moments of my career on the biggest, biggest stage. But you have to take a deep breath and step back and realize how blessed and lucky uh, you are and, and I am to be able to, to do this, do what I do for a living, and, and be here in this extraordinary event. Hey, Pat, uh, for you, when you look at each of the tournaments, is there something specific that you remember from each of your tournament bursts? Are they kind of mixed together? Does this feel different than last year, or does it feel like deja vu? Well, I, I've been very fortunate. God is great that uh, throughout the course of my career as a player, I went to uh, three NCAA tournaments as a coach. And, and as you know, I wasn't a great player. Missed 1,000 points by 874. I've said that before. <laughs> uh, but, but um, you know, and then when I became a, a coach with Coach Prosser down at Wake Forest, we went to a ton of NCAA tournaments. I went back to Xavier, and I was the associate head coach there. We went to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments, and then this is my fifth as a head coach. First one, I just remember my son was like three years old and shooting with him at the, at the, at the open practice like we're about to do right now. Um, the second one, I just remember the uh, exhilaration of cutting down nets and just the absolute gut punch of the pandemic hitting and the cancellation of the tournament when you know, I had four seniors that were playing their last college game and never got to experience playing in the greatest spectacle in American sports, including the Super Bowl. Um, the one after that, I just remember it was just a special group of high character guys. And then it, it, that was our last year at, at Winthrop. And then last year, that group at Charleston, um, I, just, I just remember how that team captured in, in the, the city's minds and hearts, right? Our city, Charleston basketball, became a deal, a big deal again, must see TV. And, um, you know, in, 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 in this year, it's just, I'm just so proud of these guys because all they heard was, all off season, all year, last year's team, last year's team, last year's team, last year's team, and they were top 25, and they won a million games in a row, and, and they, they, this, 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 this. And all they did was put blinders on and go to work and stay consistent, and they've made their own mark on College of Charleston basketball history, and hopefully there's a lot more to be written. Andrew Miller again from the Post and Courier. How, how cool is it that, you know, CJ's parents are here and that, you know, Rain's parents, and you got kind of an international squad there, but these guys are, you know, the parents, the families are finding a way to get here. It's awesome. I mean, I, I, you know, I played college basketball at Xavier in Cincinnati, so my parents were 16 minutes away on the west side of Cincinnati, and I could get back for a home-cooked meal and get laundry done, and they were at every single game watching me sit on the bench, and um, because that's what I did. But um, I can only imagine what that would be like for four of the most formative years of your life to be on the other side of an ocean and never get to see your mom and dad except for on FaceTime calls and Zoom calls. And all of our international guys, all of our players, they have extraordinary families and, and um, that love them, that care about them, that want to be a part of their college experience and be at every game, but they can't. So for them to hit this and be at the pinnacle of their playing career and to be able to celebrate this and experience this and share this with them is really, really special. So I love it. That's, that's awesome. Let's try Zoom one more time and see if Dan Tortora can hear us now. Dan, are you there? Okay, we'll take more questions in the room. 
I don't know if it's on. There it is. Uh, was talking to Rain. I've talked to him this year. He, he went zero to sixty on the tattoo game pretty quick, and he said if if they win today or you win tomorrow, there could possibly be a March Madness ink on the inside of his arm. Any suggestions from you? Do you do you, do you give any art tips to him? Well, I probably shouldn't say this, and Matt might not want me to be his head coach anymore. But I always. Um so I had a bet with our team at Winthrop that if we made the tournament that year, I would get a tattoo, and I ended up getting like my whole shoulder in here. And then I, uh, these guys said that if we go to the Sweet 16, you got to finish it, get a whole arm sleeve. So my wife is not going to be happy about that. So <laughs> if we're lucky enough and blessed to do that, I might have some 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 extra extra ink as well. But uh, yeah, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I did this one and one because seriously it was because the guys challenged me right. and I came home and the girls were like Caroline she almost fell down like who are you like what what are you doing and I just remember going and just saying like look this is what I want and I'm not coming back so do it all now and it's like all of this and it took like nine hours and I stayed there the entire time it was brutal and and like what the crap was I doing? But anything for your players. You know, obviously everybody, everybody loves the Johnny Ball game, seeing him on TV and everything like that. How special is it for you to share it with your dad? I mean, he. Some dads are in the stands. Your dad is sitting with the student managers, reading box scores. Like he's he's involved. How how special is that? Well, again, you know, Matt allows that. You know, he allows that. He. When he interviewed me and we talked and they asked the question in the interview process, what are you about? And I said, faith, family, and who? Faith, family, and teaching, right? That's, that's, that's what I'm about. And we talked a lot about family and told him, like, look, there's no such thing as balance in this profession, so the two have to coexist. And my son's going to be around. He goes, great. And that's exactly what we want. So he sits on the bench. He's on the team playing when he's not in school. He travels with us. Uh, that's special, and then my dad. I mean, I'm very biased, okay, but I think I have the greatest mother and father in the history of civilization. And uh, they have 24 grandchildren. Um, there's five of us, so I have four siblings. We all played sports. All the 24 grandchildren play sports. There's on a weekend, there's about 14 stinking games, and they're at every single one of them, right? And, you know. My mom says, you know, all the time you don't measure your life by the zeros in your bank account. It's you measure it by love, you know, and, and um, I'm very blessed. And it's awesome to have my dad here, um, my wife, my kids. This is, this is awesome sharing this with them. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thank you, Coach. All right.
We welcome Alabama student athletes to the stage, Aaron Estrada, Grant Nelson, and first team all SEC Mark Sears. Uh, we'll uh, make a couple of the standard reminders that if you have questions, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. If you could um, provide your name and media affiliation when you ask a question, uh, that would be great. Uh, as a courtesy to everyone working in here, please silence your cell phones. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we'll get to you as time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this area is prohibited. Uh, everything that we do here will be on the NCAA Media Hub a little bit after this is completed. If you could direct questions uh, to a specific player, it helps our audio folks. Um, if you want all three to, to answer, then we can handle that. But if you can direct your questions to a specific player, that's great. And I'll ask you guys as you're answering questions, if you can lean into the microphone a little bit, that'll help with feedback. So we'll go ahead and start with questions. If, uh, if there are any, we can take questions for student athletes. Um, for all three of y'all, last week coach said that um, playing on Friday would kind of be beneficial for y'all for rest to get your legs up underneath you. Um, is that something that you feel like is, is true and how has this week been from a rest standpoint? Mark, let's start with you. Uh, this week's been, uh, it's very, been very good with rest standpoint. You know, we've been going in practice. We do a lot of conditioning, so getting up and down the court. But for the first, like, Monday, Tuesday, and then from there on out, we just pretty much been doing, like, skill work. Grant? Yeah, I mean, like he said, um, just practice the first two days was a little tougher, and then the last two have been a little less. And then, you know, getting in with our trainer uh, has been a lot more uh, this past week. Aaron? Yeah, then kind of just what these guys said, the first two practices, it's a little harder. Then uh, they, like, kind of got shorter and shorter. Just skill work, like Mark said, and it has been helping our bodies to be fresh for Friday. Um, Julie Mitchell, WVTM 13 in Birmingham. I know after that SEC tournament game, uh, I spoke with a few of you, and you all, I know Coach said you guys have to make a decision coming into this game. A lot of you talked about what needed to be said um, since that SEC tournament game to coming here. What has been the conversation in, in your locker room between you guys of what needs to happen here in this game and not having um, a finish like you did in that SEC tournament? Uh, Mark, let's start with you. Uh, we just got to realize it's a new season. Uh, everybody's zero and zero, you know. Uh, we just got to come out and just play with a lot of energy and, and enthusiasm and just uh, set the tone from the tip. Grant? Yeah, I'd say, like, for some of us, especially us three who have been here, I mean, I haven't played in the tournament, Aaron hasn't, but, like, this late in the season, it's kind of win, win and go home. So, I mean, for Aaron, um, this, this, this next game could be his last game. Hopefully it's not. But uh, for us, it's kind of win and, or else your season's over. Aaron? Yeah, uh, I feel like we took the approach of first uh, flip the page from the tournament. Like Mark said, it's kind of everybody's zero and zero. Uh, and then off of what Grant said, you know, everybody's banged up around this time, tired. So at this point, is you got to find a way to win or you're going to go home. This is, uh, uh, my name is Michael Bethley, sorry, from Black Lens News here in Spokane. Uh, and I'm trying to just get a perspective of, of a lot of the players that have come from a, uh, a space of, of um, growing up in, a, in the black uh, neighborhood, black, black landscape. And just being here in Spokane, we haven't, we don't have a lot of the di diversity that's here. Um, Aaron and Mark, and Grant, if you have any input on it, but what would it take is, uh, what would it take for you to be uh, inspire some youth and, and give them some words of, of, of what it took to get to where you are and, and how do you appreciate this moment being in this space right now? Aaron? Uh, something I would say to the youth is uh, just don't give up on your dreams. Uh, you know, I have younger siblings and they look at me as a role model. So for me, uh, I kind of been, you know, that person to look up to since I was, well, since my uh, two younger brothers was born, so uh, yeah, that's what I would probably say as far as to the youth. Mark? I say it, it uh, take a lot of sacrifice, you know, you can't uh, 
go out and be with your friends. You can't party. And, you know, you just got to be disciplined and in the long run it'll pay off. More questions? Anything else for Alabama student athletes? Nick Gibson, Spokesman Review. What are your thoughts on Spokane and how do you feel about having two other Alabama schools here also competing? Mark? Uh, it's, a, it's a very quiet city um, and just having a Auburn in here, you know, we, uh, we really don't, we don't, we see each other when we leave the hotel and we come to the gym, but other than that, that's, that's all we do. Just really no inner reaction. Grant? Yeah, I mean, I love the landscape over here. Uh, a lot of hills, a lot of trees. And then, like he said, for Auburn, like, we don't really see them. But, I mean, hopefully there's a lot of Alabama people in the building for both games. Aaron? Uh, yeah, about Spokane, it's uh, super quiet. Like Mark said, well, where we're staying at, uh, a lot of hills and stuff. Uh, I kind of got a little glimpse of that when I was over at Oregon. It's, it was kind of like the same kind of landscape. But, uh, yeah, about Auburn and the other Alabama schools, we don't really – like talk to them like they say, so I don't really have a comment on that. Aaron, well, you were at Hofstra, you played Charleston, I think four times. Have you brought anything from those experiences and those games into your preparation for this game? Uh, yeah, I kind of know their system. You know, I know how they like to play. I know most of their players on that team, because like you said, I played against them. So for my preparation, I'm, I'm already knowing what to expect and how they, how they play. I tried to uh, tell the guys that, too, as well. Ryan Passing, Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, did you guys grow up dreaming of this tournament, playing in this tournament? I assume you did. And if so, what are some of your first memories or greatest memories of March Madness? Aaron, let's start with you. Uh, I mean, for any kid that probably played basketball growing up, wanted to play in college, this is probably their ultimate dream. So yeah, this was definitely a dream of mine. And then my like biggest moment, it's, it actually wasn't that recent, but it was when St. Peter's uh, went on that run, you know, because I used to play for that coach. Uh, I kind of knew all them guys, and I was extremely uh, happy for them and proud of them when they made that run. Grant? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely a dream of mine since I was a kid. Uh, I grew up watching all these teams, even Alabama. So, I mean, it's cool to be here. Uh, I fell short the past three years, but, I mean, it's good to finally get here and play. And then uh, the most recent memory I have is Jalen Suggs hitting that half-court buzzer beater. That was a pretty cool moment. Mark? Yeah, I'd say um, it's been a dream of mine to be able to be here, I'd say, three out of the four years I've been in college. And, uh, you know, one of my memories would be uh, probably when uh, Marcus Page hit the double clutch three to go into overtime. I forgot which team that was playing, but like I, it's still fresh in my mind. Let's go to Zoom, and Jack Knowlton has a question. Jack, what do you have? Jack Knowlton, can you hear us? All right, anything else in the room? Okay, we'll dismiss the student athletes and thank them for their time and wish them good luck.
We welcome Coach Oates to the stage, and I'll make the standard uh, reminders to please silence your cell phones. Um, if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone holder to you, and uh, if you can give us your name and media affiliation, that's tremendous. Um, if you're on Zoom, please use the raise hand function, and we'll address questions as time allows. Recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this area is prohibited. All audio and video, and as well as transcripts, will be in the NCAA Media Hub when we're uh, finished. And uh, we'll go ahead and ask Coach to make a quick opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions. Coach? Uh, so we're happy to be out here. We've uh, been sent out west before, my, at least personally myself, with Buffalo. And, uh, been good for us. We're happy to be in the tournament. I mean, you know, to get a four seed, it's the first time in school history we've been a four seed or higher in back to back tournaments. So, you know, we, we, we felt like maybe we could have been a little bit better, but, you know, we uh, we had some injuries. We didn't close the season well with our injuries, but we're excited to be in a tournament. We, uh, we've got to obviously play well. Charleston's good. You know, when I started watching them, once we got the draw Sunday night, they're, they're real similar to us, you know. Coach Kelsey does a great job. They're in back-to-back -back tournaments, so this isn't like new to them. They're used to being in the tournament with all the surrounding stuff that goes with it. Nah, they're not going to be intimidated by us. And then offensively, I mean, they're one of the better teams in the country. So they play fast. They shoot a lot of threes. They run a lot of five-out stuff. Got very talented players, so we're going to be ready to go. And But it is good we'll finally be healthy with both Ryland and uh, Trelly both able to play, which it's been a little while since we've had both those guys fully capable without a minute's restriction. So we, we really tried to get healthy over this last, you know, we've only played the one game in the last 12 days. Our, our biggest goal is just trying to get healthy, and I feel like we're as close to healthy as we've been in a while. Questions for Coach? Yeah, Nick Kelly, Tuscaloosa News. Uh, two, if I can, Nate. Uh, Nick Pringle, is he going to be available to play tomorrow? And Davin Cosby had a boot on his foot. Is he doing okay? Yeah, so D Davin broke his foot in practice earlier this week. So he, he's out. So we're not 100% fully healthy. That's the one injury, and it was unfortunate. I mean, he, I think he stepped on somebody's foot. He continued to practice. But then when we got an x-ray after practice, it's got a, a break in one of the bones. So he... He's out, and, and Nick, Nick's available to play tomorrow. Nick's with the team. He was dealing with a personal issue. He's, he's here with us now and should be good to go tomorrow. More questions? More questions for Coach? Blake Byler, BamaCentral.com. Coach, how, um, how have you looked at how Aaron Estrada played against Charleston in his time at Hofstra? Has that gone into any of your preparation for this game? You know what? He played pretty well. I think he had 25 points in the first half last year against them. So obviously he's playing in a different system now with different teammates, and Charleston's a lot different. But it was still Charleston, and it's still – thank you. And it's still uh, – Aaron, so I hope he's got some confidence because when he's playing with a, a lot of confidence, he's one of the best guards in the country. And I, uh, you know, I'd love for him to come into this game playing with all kinds of confidence. So, I mean, it's hard to go look at. It's just all different. He's got all different teammates, different system, but they've got some some of the same players back, and he, he was pretty good against them last year. Yeah, he was very good actually. Julian Mitchell, WVTM, right here, 13 in Birmingham. Um, Coach, I remember after the SEC tournament said uh, that the guys had to make a decision uh, coming into this one uh, about how they wanted to play and how they, they wanted to go. What have you seen uh, over these last few days to show that they have made that decision and what's been your message to them coming into this game? Yeah, we, we uh, the last two days we haven't really done a, a ton of live stuff in practice, trying to stay as healthy as we can. But I thought Monday and Tuesday they got after it, you know, to the point you don't play defense, like your season's going to be over. So a lot of the defensive issues we've had, I feel, have come down to just decisions you got to make. How hard do you want to play? How much do you want to be locked in? And if you can't get locked in when your season's on the line, 
I'm not sure what will get you locked in. So I felt like Monday and Tuesday's practices were pretty good. We got back to just really some of it was just doing some defensive fundamentals and going over some actions that, you know, Charleston runs all kinds of sets. I mean, they're after tie. They're really good, but they've got some definite actions that you have to know how to guard. And I, we started putting that in Monday. Tuesday, I thought our guys were pretty locked in. So we'll uh, – We'll see where we're at when we come out tomorrow, but I certainly hope we're playing with max effort and really locked in to trying to get stops on the defensive end, regardless of what happens on the offensive end. Yeah, one other defense question, Nate. As far as messaging, I mean, this is your fifth season here. How has the messaging evolved in terms of how you approach defense when you talk to guys about it? And um, where, do, where do you feel like it hasn't been received as much this year? Yeah, I mean, we. I felt like I gave them a similar messaging to what we gave last year. You know, last year the messaging was, you know, we were third in the country in defense, won the SEC regular season and tournament, and made a Sweet 16 run. The following year we were 92nd. We were, I believe, a sixth seed in the SEC tournament. Uh, I got bounced in the first round the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament. So we, we've got a guard. And that, that year we were third in the country again and, and won the SEC, won the tournament, and proceeded to make a Sweet 16 run. We were the number one overall seed. So my point this year was, like, we, we got to get back. You know, our goal is to try to be top five defense in the country. Well, we're obviously not that. Now, I do think it's a little bit different. You know, we, we had Herb Jones and we were third in the country. That That's huge help. I mean, he's one of the best defenders in the world right now. He's guarding all the best players in the NBA when the Pelicans play. We had Betty Ako with, you know, some real rim protection last year. You know, we don't have Herb or, or Charles, so it's a little bit harder to be third in the country in defense. But, you know, and, and we had the number one offense for a lot, a lot of the year. And now we... You know, we were a few possessions away from winning the SEC. If we beat Tennessee at our place, and that was an even game up till about the last couple minutes of the game when they kind of pulled away late. But, you know, if we'd beat Tennessee, we'd have won the SEC. So we were a lot closer to being a championship level team this year than we were two years ago. And I think, you know, our, cause our offense was a lot better. We moved the ball better, I think. And I think we've got guys that are capable of being good defenders that have shown it at times. They just gotta, they gotta choose to guard. I mean, we've looked at some teams that have made runs in the tournament when maybe they didn't close the season great, and you know, we we've tried to sell them on that. And you know, if when we when we guard, we can compete with some of the best teams in the country. I mean, Arizona, Purdue, Creighton. You look at some of these teams with their seeds that they've. Got and what they're doing, I and mean, we, we had leads on all of them in the second half, nine-point lead, six-point lead, whatever, like at least like a 60% chance or higher of winning the game in the second half. So we, we've competed with all these better teams in the country. And we also – we don't have any bad losses on the year really either. Like two years ago we had some – like where we just didn't show up at all losses. We haven't had that. So while our defense isn't what I would have liked for it to be or what our program – it's kind of set the standard to be. I think we're capable of beating anyone in the country. And, you know, we, we're going to have to come out and guard this year or this, this week. We have time for one more question, if there is one. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.
got me. <laughs> That's right. Why not? If you can't smile, you ain't trying, right? So, guys, um, when you're answering questions, lean close to the mic. We also get some feedback. If yeah. you start hearing feedback, just talk a little bit. All right, we welcome Grand Canyon student athletes to the stage. Tyon Grant Foster, Ray Harrison, and Gabe McLaughlin. And I'll issue the standard reminders to please uh, silence your cell phone out of respect for everyone working in here. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. And when you do ask a question, please identify yourself with name and media affiliation. Uh, for anyone joining on Zoom, um, please use the raise hand function for questions and we'll address them. We'll address questions in the room and then get to the virtual questions as time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this area is prohibited, so please refrain from that. Uh, all uh, audio and video will be in the media hub uh, once this is finished. And if you have questions and could direct them to a player specifically, that would be helpful for the audio people. So that's, that's great. And once again, raise your hand when you have a question and we will get the microphone to you. So questions for Grand Canyon student athletes. Happy uh, Thursday, guys. Lena Washington, 12 News. Welcome to the big dance once again. Um, I'll ask each of you individually just what does this moment mean and what does this say about the program, that this is the third trip since 2021 and just seeing this on the rise and being part of this ride for the Lopes? Each of you, if you could answer, please. Tyon, let's start with you. <laughs> uh, I just feel like it means... It I feel like it means a lot just <clears throat> because of all the work that uh, Coach Drew and the coaching staff have put in uh, recruiting players and, and um, just the system that they put in to let us go out there and um, play. So I feel like that just helps helps us a lot like with the winning. Ray? Uh, as far as what it means like for our program, I feel like it's just uh, – it's a blessing. I feel like we um, uh, we um we've set out to – accomplish this goal and now that we're here it's you know like I said it's a blessing we're thankful for it yeah and uh being here three out of four years it's a it's a blessing and I think it speaks to exactly what uh, GCU wants to do and uh our mindset towards it all where it's uh you know we want to make this a place we can come regularly and um you know we're, we're proving that step by step and so uh very excited to be a part of GCU and just blessed for uh the mindset that we all have Gonna ask Ray and Gabe what the experience of last year meant as far as coming into tomorrow to play a game of this magnitude now and having that experience and how is that going to be helping you guys? Um, I think it's just the maturity of uh, being here last year. You know, of course, playing uh, Gonzaga first round um, it teaches you a lot of things, and so carrying that, um, even the momentum from last year and having that mindset of uh, you know, understanding that it's just another basketball game and we just got to go out there and play, play for each other and play our game and, um, you know, take it to them. Yeah, like Gabe said, I feel like it's just uh, something that is to our advantage. You know, last year, um, I can speak for myself being out there. It was, you know, I was just thankful to be there. But this year it's a little bit different. I'm thankful to be here as well. But we, like I said, we got goals. And yeah. Hi, Ron Kreutzik from the San Francisco Chronicle. I have two questions. One for Gabe. I'm curious your thoughts on St. Mary's style. Um, they obviously play slower than a lot of teams, don't shoot as many threes. I think second ranked scoring defense in the country. What do you see unique about them when you, as you prepare for this game? Um, they're very talented in scoring in under 10 seconds. Uh, they're one of the best in the nation at doing that. So it means that we have to be very disciplined in our defense. 
Um, I think we can hang our hat on uh, who we are with, with our defense, but it's just making sure we follow through for the whole uh, 30 seconds. And then the other thing that they do is they just play aggressive. So you got to be aggressive. A separate question for Tyon. If you could just speak to the significance of being here, given everything you've been through and the, and the health issues you made it past, you know, what, what's that mean for you to be on this stage, playing in this game, given everything on your journey? Um, it means a lot, actually. It's just like I'm super blessed to, to be here just because of like everything that has happened in, in my life. And I just can't do nothing but thank God. And like that's a. It's just like a blessing just to, just to be here. It's like I, I appreciate these two guys next to me because they accepted me uh, coming to GCU, and, and that's why we're here today. Tyler Waters with the skyboat.org. With the success that your guys' program has had and not being ranked in the AP Top 25, does that mean anything to you guys? Gabe, let's start with you. Um, I'd say, honestly, not really, you know, it would, it would be a cool experience, of course, you know, that would be for especially my senior year, something that I would have enjoyed to have. But ultimately, I know the, the people I have on my side and I'm confident in them. I know they're top 25 to me. And so that's that's what I'm going to ride with is I got my top 25. AP can keep theirs and, you know, we'll just we'll just show what we can do in this tournament. Ray. Yeah, it, it definitely doesn't bother me. I mean, it's it was a goal of ours as well. And. You know, some goals you reach, some you don't. Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't something that we were, you know, heartbroken about or anything like that. No. Tyon? Uh, I just feel like it, it really doesn't matter. Like Gabe and uh, Ray said, I feel like we played teams that were top 25 uh, competitors and, and we show what we can do. So I just feel like it really doesn't mean anything. We know we can play with the best of them. I'm just curious, since you guys have touched down here, knowing that it's Zag's country and you're playing St. Mary's, have you heard a lot of fans who might not know about GC, where you came from, where you are, but you have the backing by proxy of anti-St. Mary's fans. Have you guys experienced that yet? We actually just did. Yeah. <laughs> we actually just did on the way. Um, we, we were practicing at, a, um, at an elementary school, and on the way in, all of the kids were uh, chanting. Uh, beat St. Mary's, and they had on uh, Gonzaga gear. Mm -hmm. It was cool. <laughs> the circle of family or support group, if you guys have family, friends traveling from out of state or out of Washington to make it to this a game tomorrow for you guys, if each of you have someone on the way or some people on the way. Tyon, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, I, I have, like, my cousins and one of my big brothers coming out here, so that's that's pretty nice. Fun, exciting. I have uh, my parents and then uh, my cousins as well, so it's, it's nice. I'm I'm here by my lonely, but uh, <laughs> nah, I still. I mean, all my friend, all my friends, family, they've all reached out to me and let me know that they're with me in spirit, and that's that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Family that has coming too, so we got reinforcements inbound. Paul Coro, GCLopes.com. For Tyon, to, in preparation for this, do you draw more on coming to the tournament with KU three, uh, you know, several years ago or what these guys experienced to help prepare you uh, for this tournament with Ray and Gabe's experience? Um, I feel like this, this tournament is – I feel like this means more just because of, like, my journey and everything and then – um, like like how they all accepted me and believed in me here. So I feel like this means a whole lot more than the one uh, COVID year with KU. With, with Cronkite News, um, going on Gabe's point a couple questions ago about the fans. They travel so well. You guys experienced it in the WAC tournament. I mean, that was almost a home game for you guys. So let's talk about how that helps uh, in these neutral site games. Um. I'd say just having community and having support, you know, pretty much everywhere you go is, is a blessing. Um, you know, it helps helps us stay locked in, know what we're playing for, and uh, you know, gives us motivation during during the games. So, uh, and I'm pretty sure it can be pretty daunting for the other team too. I mean, they wreak havoc. That's why they're called the Havocs. So.
I could follow up with Gabe and Ray on the question I asked Tyon earlier, just what do you see in sort of the perseverance he's displayed to get to this point, given everything he's been through? I mean, it's a different dimension than typical journey. I, I've spoke about this before, but just being able to have, you know, him here and, and be able to witness his story, it's a blessing, you know, and I feel like anybody who is a fan of sports or really any type of comeback story, I feel like you are able to, you know, look at him as an individual and just appreciate what he's been through. Yeah, I'd say if there was one word, it'd be resilient for Tyon. I mean, uh, he's taking hits. He's, he's, you know, of course, uh, gone down, but there's one thing he'll never do, and that's never quit. And so having him as a teammate, I know that's the same exact mindset I can I can rely on. Um, you know, he's never going to quit on us. He's never going to quit on himself. And then uh, just his outlook on life after that. You know, uh, he sees uh, life in Technicolor. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful teammate to have. We have time for one more question, if there is one. I will take you up on that offer. I'm curious for all of you guys, since Coach Drew is kind of in the history books for his shot several years ago, um, you know, what has he shared with you from his experience and have you seen him like turn it up a notch given it's this time of year from where he was, you know, part of? Gabe? Um, honestly, no. I think uh, just that is his experience, you know, not really turning it up a notch. I mean, he's always going. Uh, the cream always rises to the top, but that that is the main thing because what you do every day becomes your habits. And he's very consistent. He's a very uh, habit-driven man. and. Uh, we can rely on him being the same Coach Drew every single day. Ray? Yeah, I would agree with Gabe. I feel like he, he doesn't really talk about it to us. But, I mean, we know about it. So, But I guess that's just him being humble. or Yeah, yeah I would agree with what Ray said. I feel like that's just him being humble because, like, if it was me, I'm definitely telling people about the shot that I made. <laughs> so, so I feel like that's just him being humble. But I feel like he wants us to make our own history – uh, with him as well. So I feel like that's another reason why he doesn't talk about it. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate the time.
you can flick it on the edge. So that was awesome. <coughs> All right, we welcome Coach Drew to the stage, and I'll make the standard reminders to please silence your cell phones. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. And if you could uh, identify yourself uh, with name and media affiliation, that would be great. And uh, once again, no recording is allowed on, of press conferences on cell phones or cameras. Um, but audio and video and transcripts will be provided in the NCA Media Hub. So we'll ask Coach Drew to make a quick opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, really excited to be uh, back in the tournament, third time in four years. Um, a lot of our players have played in the NCAA tournament before, so it's a little bit of a different feeling. Um, the excitement feeling never goes away. Um, really uh, thankful to be here. And um, I know our guys have been looking forward, you know, uh, to play this week. And I um, can't wait to get out there on Friday and start. Richard Obert, Arizona Republic. Um, Coach Drew, last year, even maybe three years ago, when he got in, are you doing anything different the day before or leading up to the game, maybe just to change it up? Uh, same routine. Uh, you know, we have, uh, again, guys, I think now that are more familiar with the routine. And, um, and uh, obviously, they're, they're very locked in. We have a lot of guys, this is their last time around. And uh, they want to yeah. be able to give their best and have their best performance uh, tomorrow night. Hello, GCLopes.com. Uh, this is being portrayed as a, a battle of styles. How big do you see the contrast between those two? Yeah, we heard St. Mary's was going to uh, fast break all game and shoot under 10 seconds, so we were excited about that. Um, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, you know, they're one of the best executing teams in the country. Uh, they take good shots. They don't turn the ball over. And then defensively, um, I think they're, they're extremely underrated. They don't get talked about their defense, but you don't win as many games or championships as they do without really defending. And uh, they're really physical on defense. And so they present a lot of issues, you know, a lot of different ways. And, you know, for us, we've played teams that play fast. We've played teams that play slow. Um, I think uh, we just want to play well and play as well as we can on both ends. And then whatever the score is, high or low, um, you know, be in a position to win. Coach Drew, Lena Washington, 12 News in Phoenix. I know the goal is to make it back to Phoenix in a couple of weeks, but what would just getting this first NCAA tournament win for the program mean for you and what this program is building? Yeah, you know, uh, very thankful. You know, I think the Lord's really blessed our university. Our program's been blessed the last uh, four years. And, um, you know, to be on this stage and have this opportunity, um, we want to make the most of it. Uh, we think um, our school is really special, and we think our fan base is the best in the country. And this would be a great way. I think more people could just recognize how fantastic GCU is. So um, we know what's ahead of us. We know how hard this task is, you know, to play against St. Mary's. And uh, we know we're hoping to make uh, Lobe Nation proud. A quick follow-up, just because we can't talk to you in March without talking about your experience. How often do you flash back to that time, you know, talk about that time with your players or family, or is it just a, a long, distant memory now? Yeah, you know, it's a long, distant memory, but um, it's still a great memory. And so I'm uh, very thankful for the platform to be able to speak about it. Never thought it would be, you know, occurring 25 years later, but I think that's what makes the tournament so special. There's so many memories here um, that get intact, you know, for years to come. And and I think our players, I think other players playing the tournament today all realize that, and that's why you see so many great efforts. Hey, Coach. Michael Potter, GC Radio. Hey, uh, Ray Harrison had an unbelievable run last year in the WAC tournament to help get you to this tournament. What have you seen from him this year in kind of a, maybe a slightly different role? Yeah, really proud of Ray. I think as a coach, you're proud of uh, your players in different things that they do and improvements they've made. You know, Ray, Ray's had to probably sacrifice more than anyone on the team. Last year, he, he scored a lot. He had the ball in his hands. He took a lot of shots. Uh, this year, we've really asked him to be the quarterback. We've asked him to shoot when he's open, but we've also asked him to run the offense and get other guys involved more often. And so, you know, he's kind of taken on the responsibility, whatever it takes to win that game. And, um, and that's a big change, you know, from how he played last year. And I think he's gotten so much better at it. He's so much a better player. And um, a lot of our success goes to him and, his, and his, his heart to serve our team and sacrifice for the betterment of everybody. Uh, Rishi, I was a Cronkite news. So your family is 
so filled with basketball. So just talk about the, fam the family dynamic that you've had over the past couple of years with your dad and your brother, what he's been able to do as well. Yeah, you know, um, pretty remarkable. My dad, you know, made a sweet, six, six, a sweet 16, played in several tournaments. My brother won a national championship. Um, so no pressure on little brother, um, you know, with, with all they've done. But uh, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing for me to have the resources to be able to call and talk. And um, my brother's played against, you know, a lot of teams across the country, different styles in this modern era. So to get his input and his, um, his, his advice, um, you know, really helps me. Ron Karczyk from the San Francisco Chronicle. Two quick questions, if I can. You mentioned St. Mary's execution. What makes their defense so good? Why do they hold teams so low? Uh, really physical. I think they're physical on the ball. They're physical off the ball on your cutters. Um, you know, they have really good positional size. And uh, they have really good experience in what they do. They do well. You know, they don't mix things up. They don't play zone. They don't press. Um, what they do, they're really, really good at. And, um, and you have to beat them at them being their best. So um, it's definitely a challenge. You know, it's a challenge to guard them, but it's also a challenge to try to get a quality shot every time down. And if I can ask you about Tyon, um, Gabe described him as resilient. Um, can, can you kind of speak to his journey and, and how he's been shaped by everything he's been through? Really remarkable. Uh, sat on basketball for two years. Um, again, had the heart um, condition. Um, he's been fearless, and, and that's probably one of the, the biggest things I've admired about him is never once has he ever had any doubt about playing or thought about his condition. Um, pretty much from day one, he's been fearless, getting on the ground, attacking the rim, um, taking contact, and uh, it's just really remarkable, his, his mental toughness and his approach that he's come into the season with. And then he... Not being out for being out for two years, there's been no rust. He started out game one and started scoring the ball, which um, you know, kind of to our amazement, we thought it would take some time, you know, to see him be at his best. But he he was pretty much from day one, you know, spectacular for us. Hey Bryce, Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Um, I don't know if you heard earlier this week, but a couple of the Gonzaga players were suggesting that maybe the fans who are coming on, coming tomorrow night, show up in purple. Um, being the rivalry that they have with with St. Mary's. I know you guys have a great fan base that that travels, but in these neutral site situations, the the sort of the passive neutral fan that's here, can that make a difference having them just sort of get on the side of the underdog in, in these situations? You know, we've definitely felt it. We went out to eat last night and we stepped in the restaurant and people are, are, are saying beat St. Mary's and we went to an elementary school today and we had the elementary kids as our players are walking in saying beat St. Mary's and so that rivalry is real out here. Um, it only took us a little bit of time around people to realize how, how serious that rivalry is. Coach, I think it was Gabe earlier this week mentioned he's never seen you shoot a basketball. So my question is, is how often do you hoop and the guy who hit the shot doesn't shoot anymore? Is that true? Yeah, I know. These, uh, these, these hands and stuff, they're more for coaching, not shooting now. So, um, you, you know, one, one, one thing, I, I do shoot some. So, so Gabe was maybe um, uh, protecting me a little bit, but I'll shoot with my son. Um, one thing I think as a former player is, um, is I focus on these guys. And so it's not about me shooting or doing things like that. You know, my job as a coach is get them better, get them pre pre prepared for games. So ever since day one, this has kind of been my approach. And now through the years, I'm just out of shape and, and not as good. So we don't want them to remove any doubt that they thought that maybe I could shoot. We're going to just floor it and keep it there. Any more questions for Coach? All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all.
Check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Do you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. That's not good. Okay. Check, check, check. Okay.
All right, we welcome St. Mary's student athletes, Alex Dukas, Aiden Mahaney, and Mitchell Saxon to the stage. I'll make the standard reminders uh, to please silence your cell phones out of respect for those working in here. Um, please, as you start to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. And if you would provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question, that would be uh, preferred. If you're joining on Zoom, please uh, use the raise hand function for questions and we'll get to those uh, as time allows once we're through with questions in the room. Recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this space is prohibited, but they'll be provided for you on the NCAA Media Hub after uh, this session is complete. And if you could direct questions to a specific player, that would help our audio folks. And guys, if you can kind of speak very close to the mic, that'll help cut down to feedback. And we'll go ahead and take questions for St. Mary's student athletes. Do we have any? Well, let's start with an icebreaker question. We'll start with you, Alex, and maybe just give a comment about being in Spokane to not play Gonzaga and uh, thoughts about tomorrow's game. Yeah, I mean, it's great to finally be here and then I have to think about the Zags for once. Um, but we're super excited as a group. We think we're prepared and uh, we're ready to get into it. Aiden? Uh, good to be back in Spokane. We, we left on a happy note last time, so hopefully we do the same this time. Mitchell? Like Aiden said, we got a lot of good memories here, um, so we just want to make some more. Questions? You, you, um, Richard Obert, Arizona Republic in Phoenix. You guys do a great job working the shot clock down and getting really tough, hard, you know, great shots. You know, at the execution, is it because this personnel, has it always been the way Coach Bennett, you know, runs your team or is it just team happens to be able to do really, really well with this? Um, yeah, like you said, credit to, credit to the coaches. They really uh, put out a game plan for us that they think is the best for us to win and um, we've got a great group of guys that are um, committed to doing that every night and we go out there and, and get it done. Uh, yeah, just because you touched on uh, the personnel, it's not that I don't think we have guys that can get quicker shots up. Uh, it's just really about offensive efficiency. So for our guys to be able to get the best shot every time down is really important to us and Coach Bennett, which is why St. Mary's has had one of the best offenses in the country for 20 plus years now since Coach B has been there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't take that away from anyone's individual ability to get a bucket at any given time. It's just not really how we like to win and how we like to do things. And clearly it's worked out pretty well for Coach B and us so far. Yeah, we really preach uh, fighting for the best shot. So um, a lot of times that doesn't come in the first 10 or 15 seconds of the shot clock. So it's not like we're not trying to get a good shot early on, but we're going to run our offense and fight for the best look. More questions. Hey guys, Tim Booth from the Associated Press. Um, you guys obviously made comment up there about having good memories from the last trip up here uh, back in, I think that was January or February. Do you guys have a sense of what it's gonna be like tomorrow night, especially with probably a lot of neutral fans here, or probably Gonzaga fans and, and their fans, or their players making a couple of comments this week about hoping fans showed up and would show up in purple uh, for tomorrow night's game. Do, do you feel like this could end up being a little bit of like a road game tomorrow night? Mitchell, let's start with you. Uh, I honestly think the WCC has a lot of good fan bases and um, will support each other. Um, I know a lot of them aren't juiced that we're here, but at the end of the day, you want to support your conference. Um, but I have a feeling Grand Canyon is going to ship out a lot of fans up here, and it'll be a great environment. So we're excited for that. Aiden? Just for clarification, there were Gonzaga players, you said, that, that said that their fans should show up in purple? We love it. That's all good. Uh, we're excited <laughs> to go. We like playing on the road, so bring them on. Yeah, we are undefeated. Lean in a little bit. Lean in a little bit closer. We are uh, undefeated on the road, so that's. Uh, I hope there's more GC fans in there. <laughs> more questions. I guess along those lines, what has allowed you guys to be as good as you are away from? away from home and, and handle some, some tough environments that you've played in. Alex? 
Um, I mean, every environment's still the same. The ring's still the same height. The ball's still the same shape. So at the end of the day, we're a tougher and tighter group. And it um, doesn't matter where we are. We believe in who we are. Aiden? Yeah, I think we got a lot of guys that, that like playing in that environment, and I think that's not the case for a lot of teams. But when you got guys that are kind of built for those moments, uh, for me, I feel like playing on the road kind of fires me up a little bit more. So I, I love playing on the road. Mitchell? I think all, all of us come into road games with a little extra edge um, and chip on our shoulder because um, we know now we build this program up to where when we're coming in, it's, it's a big game for the other team always. Um, so we want to go and stay composed and – We've been through bat battles together to do that. More questions for St. Mary's student athletes? Anything else? All right, thank you guys.
<clears throat> we welcome Coach Bennett to the stage. We'll make our standard reminders to please silence your cell phone, uh, provide your name and media affiliation when you're asking questions, raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we'll address questions virtually afterward um, to a point in the room where we can get away. And uh, recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras in this space is prohibited. You can go to the uh, NCAA Media Hub and download audio, video, and uh, transcripts when this is finished. So we'll ask Coach Bennett to make a quick opening statement, and then we'll uh, address questions to him. Coach? Yeah, anytime you make it to this tournament, it's uh, been a great year, and that's kind of how I feel right now. We, we had a – it wasn't an easy route. We got off to a rough start, but these guys uh, – Ended up improving a lot and playing well last half of the year and and then some. So we're excited to be here. Uh, we have a we're playing against a good team, Grand Canyon. Um, pretty familiar with them, and uh, they have shoot. They've been in the NCAA tournament three out of the last four years, and so they know what they're doing too. And uh, Drew's a good coach and. Uh, yeah, Bryce has done a really nice job there, and they've done a great job with their program. So it should be a should be a good, tough game. Questions for Coach? Richard Obert, Arizona Republic, Phoenix. Um, hey, Randy. Hi, Richard. I know your dad well, covering him at when he was at Gilbert Mesa Community College. Anyway, you. The, the way you play your offense, your execution has been so good, especially end of the clock. I mean, is, is that meant, is it just because you want to work for the best shot or if it's, if it's there early, will you take that? And what, what's your biggest concern with Grand Canyon as far as their defense? Yeah, so that's just how we play. I mean, our deal's trying to get a good shot um, and work till you get it. So we tell them all the time, just get singles, get singles, get singles, get singles. Don't try and take a tough one. And uh, so that's just kind of how we play, and that's how we've played for a long time. And uh, we have good guards, so we play off those guys a lot and on balls and we've got an inside-out game. So that that is, I would say, normally that's how we played for a long time. So uh, in Grand Canyon, they, uh, they're good defensively. Their guards are big, physical, and uh, they turn you over a lot. They'll They'll – take risks, try and tap the ball from behind. They'll, they'll get physical with you when you drive. They, they actually have good rim protection. They can block shots. So you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to get singles against them. If you, you, you just try and take a tough shot overhand, you're, it's going to be a long night if you do that. So we, we'll, we'll need to hang on to the ball and um, get good shots and do a good job defensively on them at the other end. Tim Booth from the AP. Uh, Randy, you guys, it might be a little bit of a partisan uh, crowd against you guys tomorrow night, depending on how things play out. But you guys have been really good on the road this year. You won at Colorado State. You won up here. What, is, what has allowed you guys to be play that well away from, away from home this year? I'm not positive, but my best guess would be uh, I, we have a pretty tough group. They're just pretty mentally and physically tough. And, they like challenges. I mean, the the boxes they're trying to check at the beginning of the year are the boxes they checked at the end of the year. Um, and I think to get to win the league, to win the conference tournament, those things, you, you had to be tough on the road. And um, all the expressions that are there about toughness travels, things like that, they, they buy into that. And our leader, Alex Dukas, has done a phenomenal job leading this team, especially from where when we were three and five and we had to hold it together and keep getting better. He was he was the, the guy leading the leading the ship. So um, that's kinda that's kinda why I think we're good on the road is our guys are pretty mentally tough. Paul Goro, GCLopes.com. With your Valley Roots, do you have a different appreciation for the arc of the basketball program over the last decade at at GCU, and, and how well do, do you know President Mueller as well, too, in addition to your father? Uh, for sure. 
For sure. I, I appreciate what they've done. I mean, I, yeah, I've talked to Brian Mueller for a long time. I watched the thing grow from day one. And uh, I remember when yeah, Brian was assistant for my dad at Mesa. And so that's how I got to know him. Then he went into his uh, business world and, and just has whatever he's touched has turned into gold. And uh, that's the same as Grand Canyon University and the same as Grand Canyon University sports programs and especially uh, their men's basketball, which was, I mean, I remember talking to him way back then. And uh, it was, that was the goal to have a first class NCAA tournament men's basketball program and, and they have one. So it's pretty cool. He's a friend. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's going to be competitive tomorrow and uh, there'll be nothing about all the relationship stuff tomorrow, but it, up till this point and watching that thing grow has, has been fun for me. I, shoot, I was calling it eight years ago. I was, this, they're going to get good. They're going to get real good. I told our league office, whole deal, and here they are. And now we play them. More questions for Coach? Anything more? Randy, I'm sure you addressed this a while ago, but um, next year with, with Washington State and Oregon State joining the conference, what do you see as that doing for the level of competition in the, in the WCC? Do you think it, it'll raise it, or do you think it's, you know, they're stepping in with, with peer institutions they're kind of on par with right now? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I think it'll raise it. I think they uh, they come they come from a power five, so they have football money. They have resources to. I mean, they're in the pack. They have resources to help our league, and I, I think for sure that will happen. Washington State's had an incredible year. Oregon State's had a better year this year, um, so I think uh, it'll definitely raise our league. It will. Uh, I think it's a good move for our conference for these two years, and then we'll go from there and. I just think now things are changing so fast. I think conference realignment, I think ADs and presidents, everybody's on the hook now. They, they all have to make good decisions. They can't just, I mean, we saw what happened with the Pac-12. You, you're going to have to make some, you're going to have to play a good hand in this card game, and especially in the conference realignment. If you don't, then you're going to, you'll lose your league. So I think uh, that's where Washington State, Oregon State, that's a good two-year move for us, and I think we're going to have to make other moves moving forward, just like every other league will have to do if you want to stay in top eight or nine leagues in the country, which we are right now, and we want to stay there. Hi, Ron Kretschik from the San Francisco Chronicle. Randy, in, in Vegas, after you guys beat Gonzaga, uh, August, Augustus and uh, Alex were talking about how unusual your program is and that there aren't many transfers in or out. Uh, I'm just curious how that continuity, how much of a factor do you think that is in your success? That you didn't have to play any tournaments. You guys have stayed sort of true to your model. Uh, I definitely, I mean, it definitely helps us. I mean, that's a, we call them margins. You got to win the margins. I mean, it could be leadership. It could be working hard. It could, stuff that doesn't show up in the stat sheets, but helps you win. That is a big one right there. Our, our guys have uh, been together for a long time. That helps. They they know our program. They know what we stand for. They know we're not we're not about. We, we want guys who want to play for something bigger than they are, and uh, so we. And that's all that. Like it, it, the the thing has gotten so selfish now. It's hard to keep that, but we've been able to thus far. But what? You know we're not uh we're we're vulnerable too. Everybody is. Um, we're, we're not bulletproof, but I think uh, for the most part our program will be like that and stay like that. And we will have to adjust to NIL. We'll have to adapt, just like any any team that wants to you know be an NCAA tournament type team every year. They're going to have to do that. You're not going to be able to. You're not gonna have to be. You're not gonna be able to just money ball it and not go nil and things like that. When when I hear people say that, then I'm like, you, you don't get it. And uh, 
things have changed. College sports have changed. College basketball has changed, and we're going to have to adapt. But you don't you don't have to lose that that component of having a, a really good culture and guys that are four and five year players in your program, which is what we've always well since about my sixth year we've been that, and uh, we had to get to that where we were. Uh, we just brought freshmen in and built those guys up, developed them. We've had, we've had a lot of that. And so I think we'll stay with that. But even when we were like that before, for like the last 16 years, um, we still would bring a transfer in every now and then. We have Mason Forbes, and we had Joe Rahan and Rob Jones. So we've had some, but I don't see us changing. I don't think you have to. And I think a lot of programs have gotten in trouble or put themselves in a tough position that are high power programs with money because they've gone that direction and probably didn't totally understand what what the what the byproducts could be from doing that. And uh and I don't know either. I don't proclaim to no more than else, more than anybody else, but I do know it's tricky. I mean, there's a lot of good programs right now that you're that aren't good, that should be good, that are blue bloods. So, and you gotta be smart with it. I know, I know how. I'm very confident on how we're approaching it. And uh, again, we're not bulletproof, but I think you make good decisions and keep your you know your values right as far as what you want from uh, the character of your players and loyalty from your players and just caring about, like I said, the, something bigger than themselves. And I think that's those are the keys for us when we when we recruit and bring guys in. And, and I think once, once you get them in, if you treat them right and figure out all the NIL maneuvers, then I think you can do it. We have time for one more question for Coach, if there is one. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you.
Test, 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 test. Okay. Sing into it all you want. Um, that? Well, I need someone to hear what you're saying. I need to go back there. I guess. Yeah, but can't you? Okay, I'll have to. I'll I don't think that'll reach, reach out, out there. there. Okay. So you're going to call me? Okay, then I can send my file. So, yeah, that'll work. Call me. Check, check, check. Do you hear me? Check, 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 one, two, test, test, test. That's not good. You should hear Nats on the other one or something on the other one. Well, just, yeah, it just went away. It should be Nats now, but whatever. Check, 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 test. Yeah, there's nothing on it right now. They keep, they're doing stuff, but. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. So that cable's got to be bad somewhere. Might be. I don't know. Do we have enough to run new ones? Okay. Check, check, check. Okay, well, that's a start. Is there another? How many cables are past that? Okay, I got it. That's a good kick. That's a good kick. 